Bro, I've been gone so long. 800 DPI actually feels like my mouse is on the most slippery ice of all time. I've, I've quadruple checked that I'm on 800 DPI. I'm like, why is the mouse moving so fast, bro? This has got to be 3,200, maybe 1,600. You're telling me this is 3,200 DPI? Or 800 DPI? Sorry, we're a little confused and jet lagged. Excuse me, excuse me, Tomo. Excuse me. Let's get my comfort white noise generator going. It does feel like I got my, my mouse sharpened. Hey, does Canada still exist um, like as a distinct cultural identity? I'm asking, here's the question that I'm going to ask. At your local Canadian tire, if you are Canadian, is there still an old dude in a red shirt who will sharpen your kid's skates for you? There's, all, there's like four aisles for hockey stuff, sticks, pucks, road hockey gear, goalie pads. And then in the middle of the two aisles or the four aisles, there's a, there's a skate sharpening machine where you drop off your skates and the dude goes, there is a stand with a skate sharpener. That's fucking sick, bro. That's cool. It's all auto now. Hey, can I say, um, I had the misfortune of speaking with uh, an automated voice representative. Hello! The hotel you're staying at is experimenting with using voice AI for customer service. Please stop doing that. Let me explain to you uh, what happened, okay? First off, we might as well have... Pardon me, something up on the screen. I apologize, my words are not going to connect well today. We just got back, like, literally eight hours ago. Like, our flight landed nine hours ago. Waited for our suitcase for a little bit. Got home. My daughter decided, like, she didn't want to go to sleep. She wanted to read Ruka's story, which is fair, because she's been... Uh, She's been away for a bit. Am I missing something here? Hang on. No, no, that looks good. Am I crazy? This looks right, right? This looks okay. What's going on back here? We got printer paper. Look at this. I, I leave for like a week and a bit. We got printer paper in the damn background. What's going on? Who put that there? Hi, Tomo. Can you can you move a little bit, please? Thank you. Thank you. Um, so here's what happened. Okay, we we were on a cruise. You caught me. You caught me. We disembarked 8 a.m. on Saturday morning. We said, you know, our flight wasn't until 7.30 that night. We said, hey, let's take an Uber to the Kennedy Space Center. We, we had 12 hours. We went to the Kennedy Space Center. Great time. One of the best museums, if you want to call it that, that I've ever been to in my entire life. My daughter went on the KSC Spaceport Experience and got a cool silver coin from the dude running the booth because we explored the exoplanet Trappist-1 together. We waited uh, 40 minutes for lunch at the Orbit Cafe. And she, I mean, she was going crazy on that slide. I don't know if you've ever been to the, the planet play section of, uh, of the Kennedy Space Center. But anyway, it was great. Then we say, okay, so we were at the, the Space Center for eight hours or something like that. We were there for basically from opening till almost close. We said, let's go to the airport. We go to the airport. We say, hey, the kiosk told us to check in uh, at the desk because they needed more information. The lady behind the counter said, oh, yeah, all of our flights have been canceled for today. And I said, oh, OK, um, why? And they said, we don't know. Air traffic control. 
which seems kind of crazy. So we said, all right, whatever. And we start calling around to hotels uh, in Orlando, trying to figure out um, where we can stay. You know, we go to the hotel in the airport and they're like, we're fully booked up as of like a minute ago. We try to book at uh, all the places that they gave us that are like, we're booked, but try these places. Someone should be ready. Nah, not ready. Um, finally, we ended up staying at a hotel. And I kid you not, I had no idea it existed. It's called Gaylord Palms, which is, I'm assuming, named after the person who was the founder of the first one. Uh, and it was like the, the I don't want to say the only hotel that didn't have no vacancy or had some vacancy, but it was like, it was getting pretty close. So I called Gaylord Palms because uh, Google's AI search engine said it is a shuttle from the airport to Gaylord Palms. We book it and then I look at their website and they're like, unfortunately, we don't offer a shuttle. So I call and I get an AI assistant that says, welcome to Gaylord Palms customer service. Could you please iterate your concerns and I'll be happy to help you? And then I'm like, uh, yeah, do you have a shuttle to the airport? And then I wait, I hear like <laughs> the fucking Amazon rainforest is being fed into the large language processing model, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, she said, unfortunately at present, we don't offer uh, a shuttle from the airport to Gaylord Palms, but there's plenty of transportation options, including like a rental car terminal on floor one and arrivals or something. And I said, okay, thank you. And she said, wait, before you go, would you like to answer a few questions about your customer service experience today? And I felt so stupid because I like it's a robot, but I was still like using manners. I was like, no, actually, we're really busy. We have to go. And then the robot said, hang on a minute. I'm going to transfer you to someone who can help you. And I just hung up. I was like, I'm not going to call the customer service line. And now I got to do a survey about customer service. Like, what, what are you talking about? I know how this sounds, but pay me. <laughs> if it's like, hey, you get a, a free, you know, mojito when you show up at the hotel. If you do the survey, then I'll be like, yeah, I thought it fucking sucked. Please hire a real person and tell the motherfucker at Google that spider crawled your website that they got the information wrong you just want me to do it for free zero chance not gonna happen now at the end of the cruise am i gonna fill out the fucking survey for the the dining team and the the stateroom hosts and stuff like that yeah that's like people's lives okay but for a robot no i'm not doing it for a robot anyway so we stayed in gaylord palms overnight it was nice Went swimming, had like a 24 hour day yesterday to get home, but then we got home. No big deal. Valentine, thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. I forgot. I mean, the title of the stream is true. I forgot how to stream. It's crazy to touch grass for like 10 days and then come back and try to remember what's going on with Twitch. You ever figure out why the flights were canceled? Yeah, so there was a thunderstorm or two thunderstorms, but I guess they can't tell you um, that it's a thunderstorm because then you might be mad. So instead, they have to say air traffic control won't let us fly. As if WestJet is like, bro, we would love to fly through the hurricane right now. Um, we like, we'll nut up. We'll go balls on the table. We're not even sweating it. We'd love to get you guys home, but all oh, air traffic control won't let us. Cause there's like a 1% chance, which is really, really high by the way, but a 1% chance the plane will get struck by lightning and fucking burn up. Even if they weren't canceled, it could have been a Boeing. Uh, well we were on a, we were on a max eight. And can I tell you something? I have to say, it's a very comfortable plane. When the doors aren't coming off mid-flight, it's a much, we, we took a 737-6 from Orlando to Calgary. And it was cramped. It was fine. Like, it's air, it's air travel. It's not that bad. Um, but then when we got on the 737-800, I was like, at least we might be experiencing a rapid decompression event in fucking style bro it's got the mood lighting it's got the 
As far as I know, all the doors were screwed on because we made it. Like, it was nice. Calgary's airport is actually not bad. I hate to hand it to him, but it's true. When we landed in Calgary at 10 p.m. Calgary time, I was like 100% sure that everything was going to be closed because my preconceived notion of Alberta is that it's all 65-year-old cattle ranchers, which is obviously ignorant. Landed, I was like, oh, fuck, everything's closed. Walked to my gate, there were like eight open restaurants. In Vancouver, there would not, everything would be closed. You would be trying to eat dinner from like snacks you cobbled together from like a Hudson News or something. I got to hand it to the Calgary airport. I also have to apologize to the good people of Orlando, Florida. When we went there in August, I was like, at the Disney parks, everybody is paid to be nice to you, and they're all very nice. As soon as you get out into the wilderness in Orlando, everybody's insane. But... This time, everybody was really nice. People were, were like very normal and cordial. And I'm starting to think that it's just like uh, last August, everybody was pissed off that it was like 40 degrees Celsius and 99% humidity. So we would be like, hello, could you drive us to the airport? And they'll be like, yes, but maybe you'll die like on the way. This time it was like very comfortable and everybody was just, they were driving relatively sanely. Do Americans know that there's like, as far as I know, no other country on earth where 5% of the population is wearing a shirt with their flag on it at any given moment? Hey, Cornobi, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. I, it's just something I'm struck by every time. And maybe, see, I look at it and I'm like, no other country does that because we know where we live. <laughs> and I'm sure if you're American and you do that, you're like, that's because you don't live in America. If you did, you'd be putting the flag on everything, bro. But I'm just, I'm always stunned when I, when I'm surrounded by Americans and I'm like, they're literally like, probably like one in eight people is wearing the American flag. It's crazy. And it's almost all Under Armour. Brazil does it too? Yeah, it's fair. It's fair. I wouldn't know, honestly. I mean, Canadians, you know, they, they do stitch the flag on stuff. Don't get me wrong, but... <laughs> oh, man. Also, I'm like a... I'm just saying. I think there's two kinds of people, you know? Last couple of days of the cruise... I promise this isn't... I, I have tons of material that I've already workshopped, Okay. Um, like, uh, my Uber driver recognizing me as, uh, that effing guy who made the video about picky eaters and just swearing like crazy while my three and a half year old daughter was in the car seat right next to us. Otherwise nice guy though. Um, failing some charisma checks. Like when I was at the, I, I think it was cause I was growing like an old man beard cause I was too lazy to shave. All of my normal quips that boomers usually laugh at, they did not find funny at all. Like at the airport, I, was, I pissed at a urinal because all the stalls were uh, booked. You know, they were reserved. And as I was zipping up, I, I walked backwards and I bumped into a guy. And he said, sorry. And I'm, I said, sorry, because we're in Canada. And then I said, looks like I need a backup camera. And he just grunted. And I was like, that's pretty good for off the cuff. I guess most people in the men's room like don't want to have some witty repartee like that. Also, I got a massage on the cruise and you're, they bring you into like an antechamber uh, before the massage where it's just you and a bunch of other people that are naked under their robes uh, waiting for the masseuse to come out and say your name. The masseuse came out and said, Ryan, and I said, yeah, that's me. And then we talked for like 30 seconds and a dude across the room said, uh, wait, did you say Ryan or Brian? And then she checked the thing and she said, Ryan. And he was like, oh, I guess you've got a Ryan and a Brian in here. And I said, hey, you must be the guy who keeps taking my Starbucks orders. And the dude did not get the joke at all. I think he thought that I was actually like threatening him or at least accusing him of something that he obviously did not do. And then they just pulled me into the massage room. And I, I didn't even get a chance to be like, do you get it? <laughs> it 
And then, so after the the massage is like half a massage and half a sales call. This is how my my charisma was zero, bro. My uh, uh, the, my masseuse, you know, they're like, okay, get dressed, and like I have a consultation for you afterwards. And she's telling me like, she's like, your shit is all fucked up. Like, I know you said you don't have that much muscle tension and you have the most sedentary job of all time, but your shoulders are like fucking disasters. So let me, she gave me like a regimen of stuff I need to do. And of course, it's all like, you know, you need this proprietary massage oil and this scrub and this gel and stuff like that. So she pulled all three of them out and I pulled a little move that I've done on the massage before. I said, oh, actually, I don't need these because my wife had a massage yesterday and she bought them and she fucking nut checked me and said i checked your room data and your wife didn't buy this stuff and i was just kind of like stuck and i said oh well i don't think i need it and then she said okay that's fine but you definitely need another massage on the cruise and i said sure let me just go back to my room and check like when i have time and she's like oh we looked at your schedule uh, it looks like you have time on like day six. Should I book it? And I was like, I just had to check with my wife first. And then I, <laughs> I just signed the receipt and got the hell out of there, man. She was like doing some high pressure sales tactics. It was crazy. She's like employee of the month. The messed up part is it was like the best massage I've ever had in my entire life. She's got to be employee of the month because her massaging was great. And then the sales like... I mean, she's got to be moving tons of those fucking, like, Wish.com massage gels, man. She must be crazy at Tekken. <laughs> oh, man. No, I did not go back. But it's, and I'm, I swear to you, this is 100% true and fact-checked by real American patriots. Um... On, there was like a day at sea where I guess they didn't have enough people on the in the spa. So there was like a spa worker that was just going out and like asking people to like, hey, are you interested in coming to the spa? So I was just walking around and uh, someone with the spa uniform was like, sir, are you interested in getting another massage? And I said, actually, I've already been. I was like, this time I'm prepared for this one. And then she said, okay, sir, very good. And I looked back and I was like, that was my masseuse, bro. Like I, I, I was literally just misfiring nonstop on, like none of the quips landed. N nobody thought I was funny. They hated my jokes. I, my, my wife eats 60% of her meal. The server's like, was it okay? Do you want something else? She's like, no, 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 I'm good. I'm just not that hungry tonight. They take my plate, it's empty. I say, mine was horrible. They go, sir, really? Is there something I could do? Would you like me to pass on some feedback? I say, no, no, I'm joking. It's because I ate it all. That I said it was not good, but I ate it all. Do you get it? Hey, Caps the door. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. I was, I was trying so hard, man. I failed all the QTEs. Yes, honey? Anyway, I don't know what happened, man, but people on Twitch are loving it, so we got something going on. We're, we're back. Also, so many people on the... I, I have a very elitist take, and I'm, I think that it's true, but I'm willing to admit that it's a, possibly a bad opinion, and you can minus two me for it. I think people in cities get a bad rap for being impolite. And people in rural areas get too much glazing for being nice and well-mannered. And I, this resurfaces for me on every single cruise I go on, where there's people from all sorts of environments, but a lot of them are coming from, you know, the South or the Midwest and obviously like Indiana, you know, places where they're the only people around for like a hundred kilometers. Um, and hey, thank you, honey. Well, thank you for the gem. It's a sapphire. Thanks so much. This is what you got on your pirate trip, right? It's one for everyone. One for everyone. Did you hear that? 
So here's, here's the genesis of this take. When we're on the cruise, there's 4,000 people. The ship is huge, but I mean, there's lots of people. Plus there's like, you know, 1,500 staff or something. You're, you're always, the elevators are always busy. You're always waiting in line to get places where everybody has to go, et cetera, et cetera. It seems to me, people who live in urban environments, they got no problem. They line up. They... Uh, wait their turn because they know that you've got to, you know, that's that's the way that you get in fast is by everybody, you know, doing what they can to make it as fast as possible by just basically following the procedure. They hold the door for the elevator and let the elevator fill up. And then when, you know, you get on the elevator on floor two and you're going to floor eight, when it opens on floor three and it's full so nobody can get in and it opens on floor four and floor five and floor six, you don't get pissed off and go like, they got to do something to fix this. Bro, everybody's got to get to their rooms and like you, we're all fat and a little intoxicated because of the fact that we've been at a, a cruise for like six days. So like, just take the stairs or stop complaining. But the, the amount of times we would have like... So here's the two very real stories. I got on an elevator by myself. Hey, not Bradlington. Thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. I got on the elevator by myself. There was a three-person family, dad, mom, kid. When the door opened up, they went, ah, and then I got on. I was like, whatever, you know. Some people go on vacation to relax, and some people go on vacation to get stressed out. I hit my button and then um, moved away from the panel. We're on floor three. I'm going up to floor eight. The dad holds the closed door button. Like he's, he saw it on like an Instagram reel or something like that. Like if you hold the door button, it sends a message to elevator HQ that's like, send this shit straight to my room. Um, and then it went like two floors up and it opened up because somebody else needed to use the elevator. And like they were stressed out. And the dad was like, well, I tried. Like it was, it was insane. Like it was like, a, a, you could fit 25 people on the elevator. What do you think you get your own three person elevator on a cruise ship with 4,000 people? It's insane. And then on, like two days later, we, uh, we were on the elevator and it's super busy. Doors open up. Intoxicated woman in her 20s says, holy S, you know, there's, it's a Disney cruise. There's like 15 kids on the elevator, whatever it happens. Um, they, they pile into the elevator. It's a, a, a man and two women roughly around the same age. The doors open up, and then uh, the one family that was closest to the panel gets out. And then the woman says to what I presume was her husband, she was like, hey, can you hit the, uh, our floor button? And he said, I wanted to, but the effing moron was blocking the panel. Sorry, brother. Where everybody's trying to get where they need to go, you could just reach in and say, excuse me, or you could, you could say, hey, could you hit number seven or something like that? Like, what's going on? Just ask, say, excuse me. Like, there's, there's a myriad options. Like, you're surrounded, by other, you're surrounded by other people. I'm not suggesting everybody that lives in a rural area is like this. I'm merely suggesting that you're used to this level of socialization if you're constantly bumping into people and saying, excuse me, sorry, blah, blah, blah. If you're in an area where you can, you know, fart in your backyard without your neighbor being like, whoa, what the hell did you eat? Then this is probably a little bit unusual for you. How'd you know they were from a small town area? I'm making an unfair assumption based on the NASCAR hat. Like, I think what people are not, and that might not be true, they might live in the biggest city in, in Kentucky, for all I know, okay? I'm just saying, I think people are like, in the, when people come to the city and they're like, oh, nobody's like polite to me in the city. Well, I'm like, well, you fucking wouldn't be polite either if you were surrounded by people all the time. If you were polite to everybody, you'd never get anything done. But then all of a sudden, you know, you got a, a 100 person line to get into the restaurant and people are like, whoa, this is crazy. They got to fix this. Or like you, sometimes you, so we went to like the U.S. Virgin Islands, the British Virgin Islands. You go on like a, a glass bottom boat tour 
And people that work in like insurance sales are like, why are they doing it like this? Brother, what the fuck do you know about operating a glass bottom boat tour on Tortola in the British Virgin Islands? They've been doing, they've been in business for like a, at least a few years, I'm imagining at this point. It's crazy. Like you, you don't work in the industry and you're like, well, if I did it, I would give you a bigger cup of fish food or something like that. I'm like, you don't know anything, man. Anyway. <laughs> I, th I agree. Like there's, oh, there's, maybe it's not just North American. I think there's like a North American idea that you have to like optimize every situation you're in. You just fucking chill, bro. They're going to get, you're not, the same thing when we get off the Disney cruise, people are like, I don't know why they do it like this. You got to be at breakfast at like 6.30 a.m. They, yeah, they serve you breakfast like at your table and the same people who served you dinner eight hours ago are dressed in different outfits serving you breakfast. But like, I'm a little tired. Why do they do it like this? Why do they do it like this? I'm like, brother, this is like Disney cruise fucking 13,803. I think they got it pretty sore. I'm not saying there's not room for improvement in some aspects, but come on, man. Like they've been, they've been doing this for a bit. You really think like one 52 year old helicopter pilot's going to go on there and be like, Hey, you ever think about letting them sleep in for an extra two hours? Holy shit, bro. I never thought about it. We needed someone with your unique genius to, to blow this stuff up for us. Anyway, <clears throat> do they have a laundry service? They do, but um, we do our own laundry because it's, it's like $5 a t-shirt. That's fucking crazy, man. I like your airport tweet. There is something fucking crazy about the airport, right? Like you can't hear... I'm, I, I think that we need to recognize that there was too much airplane humor in like the 80s and the 90s. But now we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You can still make good jokes about air travel. Airplane food, maybe that one's off the table, but like we have a signal in our brain that's like pattern recognition. We're like, if this is about the airport, it must be Seinfeld, what's the deal? Hello, Corey, by the way, hello. But like, is there really any excuse except for the fact that they have 200 foot high ceilings for the fact that you can't hear the announcement at your gate in any airport even if you're sitting right next to the gate like if you're 50 feet away at a restaurant best of luck you know you're you're literally just hearing like some gregorian chants from a cathedral passenger that's probably when it's hacky is when you do the voice and then when you're next to the gate, it's like you can almost hear the the person talking into the walkie-talkie, but well, the, like you hear one word and then the data gets to the speaker, so you hear like Attention, like it's you, you just cannot understand it at all, man. But then I, I'm becoming this fucking guy who is I'm, I, I never thought it would happen to me. And I'm like, you know what? They should keep it fucking shitty because as soon as they make it good, it's just going to play ads for like, you know, Pepsi nonstop. Keep the technology shitty, bro. Don't make it good and then the fucking play an ad for Ciroc Vodka every 45 seconds on my eight-hour layover, you know? Roller coasters, though, you're right. They got to fix roller coasters because I'm like... That, that shit is like... Sometimes they're like, you can't go wrong. Sometimes it's like, if your legs leave the domain of the vehicle, your feet are going to get cut off. There's like some 17-year-old kid on... Like Alexander Graham Bell's first telephone is like, <laughs> I also never know what to say when they say, like, 
loose objects have to be in like the seat in front of you? Are glasses loose? Because they're like not strapped to my head. They're just kind of like, there's some, there's some friction holding it there. And there's gravity. But if we start spinning around, like, I don't know if that shit's going to come off. Anyway. Should we play some Bandel? <clears throat> I hold them on my face on the ride. Dude, me too. But also, like, that, I'm, I get nervous on roller coasters, man. So I like to have two hands holding the bars. Like to the point where I can see the indentations of my fingernails on the on my palms. And then with like one hand on the glasses and then one hand on this is like it's too scary. I reach around the bars to hold my glasses. Okay, you know, this is how I know we're all, you know, in the same it's the colors of the wind, you know, man. What did she say? The crocodile and the otter are my friend. We're all in one fucking everlasting chain that goes from the beginning to the end. If you put your arm through the bar and grab your glasses and then you involuntarily clench your muscles during the entire ride, when you get off, isn't your, like, the inside of your elbow fucked up? Because I feel like I've done that. Here's how anxious I've been on roller coasters. And it's, you know, whatever. I'm getting over it. Sometimes I will get off a roller coaster. You know, you get to the theme park at like 5.06 a.m. So you can rope drop fucking Winnie the Pooh Bears honey bucket extravaganza. For some, some of the rides are like, uh, hey, get in a little uh, monorail and look at some puppets. And then some of the rides are like, we drop you from 200 feet into a little bucket of slime and you don't know which one it is until you you see the ride vehicle come around at the front of the line sometimes you're like holy shit this thing doesn't even have seat belts this is going to be relaxing and sometimes you gotta they're like take everything off of your face and body and then strap in this like safety system you've never seen before and then some 11th grader making like three bucks an hour comes over and goes like anyway then I get off the, it's, it's, so it's like, first ride is done, right? I get off the, the roller coaster and like my hands are hurt for the rest of the day. And you're like, why not just squeeze less hard? I would love to, man. I, I can't, it's, it's involuntary. Anyway, bandle, bandle. Does being bald change the experience? Unfortunately, it does. Because, like, if you're at a theme park in the summer, you want to wear a hat so you don't get a sunburn. And then you got to take your fucking hat off on the roller coaster. And you're like, oh, fuck. All these people know I'm bald now. <laughs> and then you got to do, like, the, the walk of shame to the cubby with all this shit after it. And you got to, like, put your hat on. And then your people are like, he doesn't want people to know he's bald. And I'm like, I don't fucking care. I just need, I, like... Anyway, by the way, I know Corey's here. I was going to talk about it. I don't think I'm going to do it, but I'm actually, for the first time in 15 years of baldness, I am considering the, the 3% possibility of growing the horseshoe. Not Costanza, you know, one inch long hair, but like a, a fucking tightly buzzed horseshoe, like a, like a two week horseshoe or something like that. Why? There's something about it that's just like when I see it, I'm like, maybe it's the evolution of, of baldness. Hey, Hoffman VP, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Don't get me wrong, okay? So I'm shaved bald, and I've been shaved bald for a long time. But when I see like... And it, listen, if you're 24 and bald, don't do it. Go, go full bald. But I'm 35, you know, I got some gray in the beard. I got some wrinkles on my forehead. A little tight fucking horseshoe, it, it almost seems kind of kind of stately. You know, it's like, it's, it's almost like the comb over is like the most 
embarrassed bald. It's like nobody, nobody knows I'm bald. And then you just look in the mirror or like any reflective surface on a windy day. And you're like, nobody, as long as I can just maintain like this incredible one of a kind, like snowflake pattern of wisps, like nobody knows I'm bald. And then like shaved bald is like, I have accepted baldness, but I kind of am still obscuring my baldness because you can't see the hair pattern very well. It's like you're bald, but like you've gone so bald that I don't know how bald you are. But a fucking like two week, like just, just past stubble horseshoe that's like, check it out. This is my hairline. I'm 35. I have a family. Doesn't bother me. You want to you want to see my hair? I'm not I'm not ashamed of my hairline. Yes, I will have another. Mm, medium rare? No, you know what? Today, let's go rare. I'm the, I'm the CEO of business. It's almost like like that's the most that's owning baldness. I thought shaving your head was owning baldness. Rocking a, a, like being a bald guy who still goes to the barber is owning baldness. Because you're like, you know, why are you going to the barber? You don't have hair. And I'm like, because I want to look good, motherfucker. I want this shit to look sick. Corey tried to talk me back from the edge, though. <laughs> He was like, I've never considered it in my life. And I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe I'll try it and I'll be like, I fucking look like I'm 72 years old. So I'm trying to remember how to work my stream. How do you work this shit, bro? It's scary to think like I'm getting back into the swing of things. I have the easiest and dumbest job in the world. There's people who fucking, they're like a pilot and they take like a six month sabbatical. I, I do not want to be on that flight when they come back and they're like, how, how does this shit work? Wait, you guys tighten the bolts on the door, right? Oh, no. That's all right. I'm sure they give them like the easy flights on the way back, right? When they're just getting started. They're not like, hey, do the do the 14 hour leg from New York City to Tokyo, right? They're like, eh, just take some people from Newark to fucking Princeton or whatever. Some Taylor Swift fucking private jet itinerary. 2004, one billion views. This has to be um, Hollaback Girl or Gold Digger or Hey Ya. Or Beverly Hills. I'm gonna know it. It was released when I was in the 10th or the 11th grade. Wait, what was popping in 2004? Um, this Love by Maroon 5. By the way, can I say something? Okay. I'm not, I'm not Jamaican. All right. If you are Jamaican, you ever get a little fucked up and pissed off thinking that like every single Caribbean destination plays Bob Marley on all the tourist stuff? I was, we were going to the British Virgin Islands. They were bumping like eight Bob Marley songs on the boat on the way there. I'm like, bro. This isn't Jamaica. It's not Jamaica. Oh, we can't hear. Okay, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I'll play it one more time. Hanging round downtown by myself and I've got so much caffeine cause I've been drinking iced coffee and there she was. She warmed up my croissant, yeah, there she was. My Starbucks debutante. I want snacks and coffee, yeah. Something like that? Okay, now, one second, still got it. Ah, uh, okay, one second. It's, um, uh, Hubastank, the reason. 
found a reason to be in the music video they're robbing a bank and this was for me probably the last little gasp of huge budget music videos that made the song that kinda suck shit a little bit better and more compelling they still make high concept music videos in K-pop Dude, that NMIX tweet left its uh, intended audience, huh? But like in a good way. I was talking about how the, the only two demographics that are outside with their families with one AirPod in are Gen X dads addicted to gambling and teenagers. I said the kids are listening to NMIX and the dads are trying to figure out if uh, Tyrese Maxley is going to hit the over on 3.5 rebounds. I looked at this shit, it had like 35 quote tweets. The Enmix stands founded and went, good job. Enmix stays winning. And I'm like, bro, I, I've, it's been known two weeks ago. Did I say Dash, Song of the Summer? Also, people are insulting me. They were saying stuff like, uh, look at how far K-pop has reached. Even NL's talking about it. My wife, she, she plays K-pop for me all the time, bro. And sometimes I'm like, mm, it's not my favorite. And sometimes like when Dash came on, I was like, this shit's got some fucking mix-ups in it, bro. She showed me that IU music video where they're like, it's a Black Mirror episode and they're running in the mall through the cube. I know what's up. That's the only good end mix song. Bro, Roller Coaster's kind of hot too. Anyway. I don't know the rest. I'm not insulting the rest. Let's go higher. Holy. They fucking honey dicked you? They honey dicked you on the last note? When it when he goes super high? No way, bro. I didn't know it was possible to make that song worse. It is a bad song. Do not kill this guy with hammers. Music video was pretty hard though. <clears throat> It's my homie's favorite song. I can't imagine. This shit is so sad when you like, you think your friend is cool, then you're at his house and he's like, let me play something for you. And it's the worst fucking top 40 radio rock soulless song of all time. And you're like, really, bro? I thought you had a rich internal life. Your ass really at home, like listening to Huba Stank on repeat. Like I, I was wrong about you, man. Like you're still a cool guy. Don't get me wrong. I just obviously misjudged the situation. All right, after a long week away, we're back with the dolls. Uh, I was in the Eastern Caribbean. Cause some, I, this is embarrassing. I was in the Caribbean, and I basically don't know where I was. Like, I could tell you the names of the places, but I could not tell you their relative geographic positions. I was in the British Virgin Islands. I was in the U.S. Virgin Islands, and I was in the Bahamas. Is that, the, is that the Eastern Caribbean or the Western Caribbean? Western. Okay. Eastern. Never mind. <laughs> oh, man. That is the American zone. It's kind of crazy. I really, like, I can't say this without it coming across as offensive. But, um, like, it's, maybe it's okay that it's offensive. Uh, in a way, at least. I lived in Korea for a year, and the kinds of like uh, people that come from North America to teach English in South Korea, you meet some normal, nice people, and then you meet some insane people who are escaping from mistakes that they made in their life, um, and they're like, this is my only way out. You know, you, you meet like someone who just finished college and they're like, I can pay off part of my student loans, get some work experience and also travel. And then you meet some dudes that are like, I'm 42 and I just got divorced and I needed to do something. And I'm like, brother, this is not 
this is not supposed to be your domain. You could go for it, don't get me wrong, but like, that's scary. When there's a 22-year-old who just graduated from college who's like, I'm going to teach English in Korea, you're like, okay, give it a try. When you're like, I'm 53 and this is my third year, you're like, what? It's, I'm not saying you're doing anything crazy. I'm just saying it's, it's a different vibe. And then the kinds of dudes that I was seeing who obviously had restarted their lives on the American Virgin Islands was like that cranked up to infinity. Like there were dudes who were just like, I don't know how to explain it. They were just pirates. I don't know if maybe they were like involved in some kind of tourist operation, but they were just walking down the street dressed as pirates. And I know what you're going to say. Those are actors. But it was like they were method acting if that is... <laughs> like they did not look like they came from uh, Fayetteville and then they'd been in the U.S. Virgin Islands for two days. It's like they had lived there for like years. And they were having like rum punch at 8.07 a.m. And it was not day one. Anyway. But it was fun. I had a great time. <clears throat> Back to work. Johto. Okay, it's a classic, uh, classic question. Johto is region two. Is that correct? Region two. Generation two. Flying Poison, Crobat, easy, Poison, Final Evolution, fucking Arbok, bro, Normal Poison, Skorupi, let's go for the safer bet, Normal Johto, mmm, Bidoof, <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Badoof, not Generation 2. I, I would, he had Generation 2 written all over him, bro. Normal Evolved by Friendship seems very tough. Flying Johto. Ho-Oh from the last episode of the anime. Ho-Oh did not look this fucking angry in the show. Am I crazy? I thought he was like a majestic bird. That was like, it made you think about the possibilities of the future. And then like his character portrait is like, he's pissed off, man. <laughs> they made him vindictive. They gave him a fucking swoop and a smoky eye, bro. I thought he was like, uh, I thought he was like Mew. Like he was birthed from the, uh, like a pure angel or something like that. Apparently not though. I don't know. Maybe it's just a look. Maybe it's just a look. Flying evolved by friendship. I have no idea. Johto. Final evolution. We do this every time. You got Torchic. You got Chikorita. Chikorita evolves in the fucking... Chikorita. Chikorita evolves in the fucking... She's got the flowers around her. Plume. Hmm. A canopy. Hmm. <laughs> um, fucking Vin. No, I'm thinking of Venus. Yo, Venusaur G Max, bro. Got the Jonathan Taylor Thomas look. And my body hair growth pattern, but you know, they're kind of owning it. Oh, dude, they made a, they made a G Max Eevee? Look at this, man. He just gets cuter. It's the only Pokemon that just gets cuter as it evolves. Hatterene is a, is a fucking, is a hat. I don't know what else to say about Hatterene G-Max. Um, Torchic and Chikorita and Piplup. Piplup and Totodile, who then evolves into Crocoma. Into Croco. <laughs> that doesn't look like a final evolution. That looks like a second evolution. Rock rough own tempo. <laughs> like and rock midday, man. Like and rock midnight. Holy, oh, get some sleep, brother. This is crazy. <laughs> croco, croco guy. 
Varum. The only Pokemon you can smoke. Croco, it's not... I'm not... I, final Evolution Evolved by Friendship. All I could think... Oh, you know, I know it's Alakazam! Because, oh no, that's trading. That's not friendship. You can trade with your enemies. Just look at the global economy. Um, I have to imagine that like Clef, Clefable might evolve. No, they evolve via the Moonstone. You point Dexter. Flying evolved by friendship. Who's the friendliest flying Pokemon? That's got to be fucking Togekiss, bro. Look at this guy. All right. Normal Johto. Fucking Pat Rat. Pat Rat, he looks pretty normal. Was he not Gen 2? They weren't at the bottom of the barrel by Gen 2. Johto, final evolution. Who's the fire lad from, from Gen 2? Torchic. <laughs> I don't know. He evolves into Blaziken. He evolves into Cinder Ace. He evolves into Indeedee Male. Minior Meteor. What the fuck is Runericus? <laughs> is this real, man? Is this, what is this? This looks like some shit you draw at a museum and then you scan it in and it like shows up on the screen. What is it, man? It's, the stroke is thicker than my Photoshop thumbnails. I think it's clear that I'm cooked here. I haven't seen almost any of these motherfuckers ever. Um, this is not good. <laughs> Normal poison. Weedle. Really? <laughs> I thought that was I thought that was good, man. Flying and evolved by normal evolved by friendship. Is there any Pokemon that are holding a heart or something like that? What about what about um Smoochum? Smoochum evolves into Jinx via friendship. This was a fucking tough one, man. This was tough for me. Let's see most common. Oh, Centred! The, the mom said it's my turn to use the Xbox Pokemon in Pokemon Go. And you're going to be like, what does that mean? When you see him <clears throat> in Pokemon Go, he stands like this. Like, like a kid in your door frame at 1 a.m. I threw up. And then you also see 300 of him every day if you play the game. Blissey, I, I probably could have gotten. Togetic? Oh my god, I said Toge Kiss evolves by friendship, but that's fucking a little bit semantic, okay? Okay, obviously Togetic does evolve by a friendship. Maybe it's not semantic, maybe I'm just wrong. Uh, well, that was a fun one at least. It's supposed to be semantic. Poke Doku, you will never be the New York Times. It's a movie that takes place in New York City, which narrows it down to 80% of movies ever released. The other 20% are set in Los Angeles. That's Madison Square Garden. What's the most New York movie ever made that could be lit like this? This honestly, to me, I'm going a little crazy. This either looks like, I'm, I swear to you I'm being genuine when I say this. This looks like Michael Bay or David Fincher. I feel like it's one of the two. To me, this looks, I'm going to say this is Uncut Gems though. Because I see Madison Square Garden. It, does it open with the, no, it opens with the, they're pulling the opal out of the mine. And then it goes, back to Adam Sandler. The dinosaurs were, were coming to this thing. Daddy, Mommy, Me. Marriage Story takes place in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, this is Insidious. They don't have that one, huh? Put a shirt on, Daddy. Daddy's, wait, Daddy's got boxing gloves on. Daddy's got boxing gloves on, bro! Uh, it's not Creed. Um, it has Curtis 50 Cent Jackson in it. 
Hi, Tomo. <laughs> Creed 2. Um, next. It's got Forrest Whitaker in it. It's the Jake Gyllenhaal movie that I thought hadn't come out, but it has come out. Jake Gyllenhaal is in UFC. The movie is called Undisputed. It's called Forgivelessness. It's called The Fighter 2. The, the Brawler. I'm not going to know it. I'm not going to know it. Southpaw. <laughs> I know I've seen... I saw Jake Gyllenhaal getting cut up. You know, like it was like, oh, look at how, how shredded he is. And I was like, that... I probably saw the first picture of that in 2017. And then imagine my surprise like a week ago when I was like, apparently this shit is just coming out now. This is an old movie. This is old. I'm, I'm, I'm out of the fucking loop, bro. This movie's from 2015. Well, it shows what I know. They got me today. They got me. Two different movies. Fair enough. One's boxing, one's UFC. It really is Curtis, Curtis 50 Cent Jackson in it. 60% on Rotten Tomatoes. But I like that. I like that they, they pull some, you know, mid cuts for frames sometimes. I would have thought that it, uh, like the first few times I played framed, I was like, I get it. You know, you love John Cazale movies, but it's just not like, Stuff that I understand, I haven't, I'm not that familiar with them. But now that they start pulling like, you know, mid tier, mid 2010s boppers, I'm like, I respect it. AFC team in 2020. After 15 seasons as a Charger, Phillip Rivers played the final season of his NFL career with this AFC team in 2020. I have no idea. It's the <clears throat> a team that didn't have a, a a quarterback a few years ago. Before Joe Burrow got drafted, the Bengals were dookie tier. Nope, not true. All right. Following his tenure with the Knicks, Jeff Van Gundy acted as the head coach of this Western Conference team from 2003 to 2007. That's easy. It's the Utah Jazz. All right. NHL! NHL! This Tampa Bay Lightning Center led the NHL in goals in 2010. Yeah, okay. Steven Stamkos, bro. That's a gimme. After Berlin, what is the most populated city in Ger... Um, I'm going to guess that that's Germany. <sighs> My, I mean, I would think that there's Munich and Frankfurt and Hamburg. And then probably like some city I'm forgetting that's actually the right answer. I'm going to guess that it's Frankfurt, because otherwise, why would they build the big airport there? Wrong. <laughs> it's, what is it? It is Munich. Is that why Steven Spielberg made the movie? Don't answer that. It's Hamburg? It's Christopher Nolan and Emma Stone. Did I not? I didn't, I didn't pick Christopher Nolan. My mistake. A terrible image. Well, originally packaged in blue bottles, this flavored brand of water introduced in 2002 is a product of Gatorade and is marketed by PepsiCo. Propel. Holy cow, he's cracked, bro. <laughs> How'd you get it? I was alive then. After Two and a Half Men, Charlie Sheen's next TV role was starring in this FX sitcom loosely based on a film. From 2000... Oh, it's, it's got to be Anger Management, bro. This is the only thing that makes sense. Now, that is crazy because I haven't seen Anger Management, the show. I saw Anger Management, the movie, two times. Didn't like it either time. It was kind of... An embarrassing mark on Jack Nicholson's career, but he can do what he wants. 
Following four lifelong stoner friends, Dave Chappelle starred in this cult favorite stoner comedy, Half Baked. What do you mean lifelong stoner friends? Aren't they like 22 in the fucking... <laughs> in the movie? Anger management does have a goaded gift, though. You're right. Jack Nicholson going... I know what you're talking about. This female singer had her first top five hit in 2018 with her song, Bad at Love. I'm bad at love. And it's going to be a And it's going to be a And then her first number one hit in 2019 with Without Me. I don't know who this is. I'm going to assume that it's Bebe Rexa, the most famous artist I can think of from that time period who I know nothing about. It is not Bebe Rexa. <laughs> who is it? That's Halsey! Oh, Halsey! Does, is Halsey the, the uh, woman part from... Now I'm sitting pretty in a hotel lobby. That one? Yes, she is. What's your favorite Jagged Little Pill song, NL? Listen, now you're going to get me talking, Okay. It's kind of hard to separate the popularity of the songs on the album from how they play in 2024. It's not ironic. I think ironic is overplayed, but also a little overhated. But it, you ought to know, like I, I just, I romanticize going back in the time machine to like 1993 or 1994 and hearing that shit on the radio and being like, damn, she's fucking breaking the house down. She's talking about sucking dick in the movie theater she wants to like kill her ex-boyfriend and the bass is going crazy and the chorus she's screaming and then her voice the alanis voice when she gets really emotional and she goes like hey hey you know what i'm saying but there i like a lot of them i like i like head over feet i like um what i really want side one track one i like uh I mean, I like um, You Live, You Learn. I think that's inspirational. Uh, the album has no skips. I don't know if it has no skips, but it has some good ones. I mean, I, I, it's almost all great ones, I should say. What's the one that's like, Hello, Mr. Man. You didn't learn my name. You didn't think I'd come back roly-poly and give you your T-shirt with a stain. And I'm at my home now that I'm a millionaire. That's a good one. That's a, that's a good one, too. That's right through you. I see right through Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, they got some, they got some classics on there. I got to check this album out. Is actually the Canadian... Many people are saying that Jagged Little Pill is the Canadian exile in Guyville. Many people are saying it. I'm not the first person to say it. What are we on? Wordle fucking three? Like, we got to go a little faster, bro. Wordle 3, Baby Cradle Can Meow. <laughs> Good for the cradle, brother. Towel, pajamas, slippers. Pajamas, slippers, robe, and washcloth. Things you wear after a bath. That's fucked up, bro. Just think about it for a second. This could be rearranged to loips. <laughs> We're going too far. Too far. Towel, washcloth. Booty. Booty. Booty, bum, rear, can. Synonyms for your anus. She took a shit in the mother cradle and no washcloth can clean the spoil. Things Rebecca Ferguson did when she called out a male actor she will no longer work with because he yelled at her. Am I still up with the modern discourse? Am I still, am I still current? 
You pretty much got it. Okay. <laughs> what happened to Kate Middleton, man? They posted fucking Dolly 2 images of Kate Middleton. The hands are all fucked up. The skirts don't match. What is she okay? What's going on, man? Also, who is Kate Middleton? Spoil. Pilos. Slopey. Bore. Bore. Loti. <laughs> I still, I'm, brother, I'm, this is shit you wear after the damn bath, okay? Eye, the eye of a hurricane. The baby of a hurricane. Mother, baby, cradle, things that hold a baby. Babies, baby, pamper, pamper, re, p map, re, p map. Hey, Rex Mechanica, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Things, things you use to dry off. Yeah. Four-letter words. Words with oi sound. Words with two vowels consecutively. Words with an E and an O in them. Words where the only vowels are an E and an O, and you, yo, would you, would you fucking, would you fucking do, yo, okay, no, I'm, I am mentally ill, I'm mentally ill, I'm seeing patterns that don't exist, I'm the inspiration for Darren Aronofsky's hit film pie, I'm performing a self-trepanation, the New York Times has infected me with the mind virus, but I'm not wrong, right, EO, EO, Pamper. Things that happen to you at a spa. You get pampered. You get a robe. You get a slippers. You get some fucking pajamas. Things you get in first class on the airplane. <laughs> bath robe, bath towel, bath slippers. Bath, bath, <laughs> bath, 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 bath. Did I ever tell you I think washcloths are a scam, by the way? Towels, necessary, important. You need to dry off somehow. You're not just going to air dry. It'll take you like an hour. Washcloths, what do they do, bro? What do they do except take up space in the laundry? How else do you wash your, wash your sensitive regions? Fucking get in there with my with my fingers, bro, the way God intended. It removes dead skin? I'm not sweating all that. They scrub and exfoliate? Isn't that like a, a bad for you? You literally are. <laughs> well, you know. I guess. I don't know. You think cavemen had fucking exfoliation, bro? No shot. How do you clean your back? Momentum and water? Hello, honey. Whoa, you painted your fingernails. No. Oh, is it a Band-Aid? No. It's tape. No. What is it? It's a, a nail decoration. A nail decoration. It looks so nice, honey. It looks so cool. Maybe after work you can do it to daddy, okay? You okay? Okay, bye bye. Thanks for visiting. She's got the four syllable words down. Yeah, she can read. It's. Uh, kind of amazing, to be honest. Like she can't read everything, but she can... You know, the clip where she could read was from like a month ago. She's fucking literate now. <laughs> She's popping off. Because the thing is, is like once you learn how to read, like you can... 
you know, read even more, right? <laughs> you know, it's, it's obviously she didn't get the intelligence from me. It's like when you can't read, you're basically just looking at nothing. But as soon as you can read a few words, you can start like piecing the, everything together. It's like programming. It's like it's when, once you learn the syntax and you're like, oh, I can actually like make applications now. And while you make the applications, it firms up your knowledge of the syntax and then you get exposed to higher order problems and then you solve those problems and those become foundational and you just keep, you just keep going. And then eventually, I don't know, sometime around 2014, everybody fucking lost it. And every application just keeps getting worse and worse and worse for some reason. Why the fuck do we have paper towel dispensers that can run out of batteries, bro? What the fuck are we doing as a society that the paper towel dispensers can run out of batteries? We had it. The automatic sink, if it works, I understand. Maybe you don't want to touch the tap. But the, we had the pumps on the soap dispensers and the, you smash the fucking hammer on the paper towel dispensers and the paper towel comes out. Now listen, I'm not going to let you gaslight me either. It's, oh, it's environmental, it's environmental. You wave your hand in front of the fucking thing, one centimeter strip of towel comes out. Your ass is not drying. You didn't wash your hands adequately if that's enough to dry your hands, okay? You got to do it like five fucking times. And then you get like one normal regulation size strip of paper towel. Shit is so annoying. And so now I feel like they, they're like, they've got some nanny tech in there that if you, if you wave your hand too fast, they're like, sorry, you don't deserve this paper towel. Who do you think, what, what society do you think made you, motherfucker? You are subservient to us. I need the paper towel. You don't tell me how many paper towels I need. Oh, you're at your a lot, you're at your quota of paper towels today. Fuck you, bro. Give me the paper. We the people made you. And you try to deprive us of the fruits of our labor. And I meant that fucking tweet that I tweeted. That was like motion sensing sink, manual soap dispenser, fucking Dyson hands-free air dryer. What are we doing here? How are we shaming people? Are we shaming people for not washing their hands for 20 seconds? Or are we shaming people for, oh, you're killing the environment because you need two paper towels to dry your fucking hands. Make up your mind how we're going to be sanctimonious today, okay? Phase one, thanks for the gifted subscriptions, by the way. Thank you. You know that... I don't know if it's a tweet or a Tumblr post or something that was like every 50 year old programmer has one piece of technology in their house. It's a printer and they keep a gun next to it just in case it goes off. That's how I'm starting to feel about society. <laughs> I'm, I know this is the great contradiction of my life is that I, I rely on this technology to work. So that's not lost on me. I am participating in society while criticizing it. But at the same time, you got to stop making tech Boys, you got to stop. What we've got right now is most of it is pretty bad. Spend the rest of your life making it better and then don't make any more. Okay, you did you did what you could. I need money, though. I understand that. But like <laughs> somebody has to stop you, man. Sorry, we're playing connections. <clears throat> Tech enthusiasts, my entire house is smart. Tech workers, the only piece of technology in my house is a printer and I keep a gun next to it so I can shoot it if it makes a noise I don't recognize. Exactly. That's, thank you, librarian, thank you. <clears throat> Hello, honey. Mommy, I killed that flashlight. Oh my God, what are you doing with that flashlight? It's for looking for you. Oh, you found me. For hidden potions. Oh, for hidden potions. Oh, hidden persons, like myself. Yeah. Okay, honey. What? I think you should go up and see mommy. Daddy's, daddy's doing a puzzle right now. Okay, come. I can't come. I got to get some work done. Hi. Can you say hi to chat? Hi. But can you make a surprise? Can I make a surprise for you? I'll see what I can do, okay? 
For now, go have some fun with mommy, okay? I know you got lots of surprises, though, right? You need more, <laughs> and that's why we can't stop making the tech, man. That's why we can't stop. By the way, I don't know if you can see the light reflected on my face right now. I w there's a, a culture on the Disney cruise, okay? Of um, it's called pixie dusting. You give other rooms on the cruise ship. Uh, little trinkets and gifts and stuff, especially if they have kids. Because the kid, you, what's your favorite part of going on a Disney cruise? Surprise. The surprises, right? I wish all families that are putting 35 million lumen flashlights and LEDs into these things a very stop right now, please. Any parent will tell you, I, the kids love it, but what are the parents doing? putting like a, a laser pointer that could take down a 737-8 Max in the mailbox. Like some, they, they put in like, oh my God, you scared me. <laughs> they put in like candy and stuff and I'm like, that's great. I'll have half, she'll have half. She's three and a half. I'm keeping her safe, right? But then they put in like a, literally like a police flashlight and I'm like, why would you put that why would you give that to a child in a, in a confined space? Like, we were on the cruise. Here, come here, come here. And uh, she said, Daddy, close your eyes. And I said, okay. I closed my eyes. And she said, okay, open them. And she had two incredibly strong LEDs that came into our, like, ship mailbox. And she was holding them, like, a centimeter away from her eyes. And I was like, you gotta stop that! Why, why were they giving us these LEDs in the first place? The other, the, the food is good though. Yeah, oh, hey, why would you put my chapstick under the desk? Now I can't get it. Here, go, go up and see mommy. She's calling you. Bring your flashlight. Okay, okay, go ahead. Anyway, problem. When does daycare restart? Well, like today, but we got in really late last night. Today's all messed up. Okay, connections. Towel, robe, <laughs> bath slippers, bath washcloth, things you use in a bath, things in a spa locker room. Hey, Mr. Pony, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Things you can uh, do to a child. You can spoil it. You can cradle it. You can mother it and you can pamper it. Okay, we got there. What? You can baby it, not, not mother it, I guess. Treat with excessive care. Cat, okay, cats, blank. I'll give you that one. I made the same mistake. Listen, I'm, I'm very pro-connections, but I do want to say, I guess, well, whatever, they kind of got me. <laughs> Look, I'm going to keep the dolls going. I'm sorry, I got to go pee, though. My bladder's on Eastern Standard Time. I'll be right back. I apologize. Can I also say, uh, as men, we need to have an intervention, okay? 
what is it about being on an airplane that has 15%, just eyeballing it, 15% of men going like this the whole flight. The whole, the whole time? Like once over the course of the, the flight, if you have no other option, like I get it, but literally like every two minutes for the entire flight, like what's, what's wrong with you, bro? I don't mean it in like a judgmental way. I mean like in a medical way, what's, what's wrong? Can't you just go to the bathroom? That's what I'm saying, man. Just go to the bathroom. You, you got to fart on the airplane. You go to the bathroom. You wait in line behind five people who take way too long. And then you let it rip in that cavernous toilet. You got a hork? Do the same thing. It's no big deal. <laughs> Holds up, hork. <laughs> You just fart in the seat? We live in a society, bro. I'll return soon. <clears throat> BRB. Sour condiment. Sauerkraut. Muppet with a long hooked beak. Gonzo. Drunken as a brunch. Boozy? Letters beside Chuck Schumer's name. Dem. What? Buzzy. Used as a campaign talking point. Ran on. Oh, DNY! D dash NY! Oh, I thought that was like a fashion designer. This guy's insane. That was pretty good. I had 36 seconds with a couple mistakes in there. This shit took me six minutes today. I don't know. It's different people, they got different, different things trip them up, right? Like, I mean, I got fucked on connections today. But the New York Times mini cross... You know what the secret is on the new New York Times mini crossword? Do not... Um, ever make an account. <laughs> I don't need an account to play your mini crossword. The second you make me make an account, I will no longer be playing your mini crossword. It's up to you. Maybe you decide that you need it at some point. That's fine. I'm happy to divest myself uh, from the miniature crossword. I'm not making another account. I'm full. I don't need I'm not. I'm not downloading any more apps, okay? Stayed at a hotel called Gaylord Palms. They said, you want to find your way around the hotel? Download the Gaylord Palms app. You really think I'm going to download an app for every single hotel that I go to? You must have lost your mind. We used to navigate by the fucking stars, bro. And now I need to have an app for every store I go into to help me navigate from fucking menswear to sundries. Like, no, I'll just walk. I don't need it. I don't need an app for the MCO airport. Oh, look, fucking Auntie Annie's is open. Who gives a shit, bro? I don't need it. It's too much. It's got the price on the box. You got to be some kind of person <laughs> to, <laughs> to fucking buy 200 sticks of double mint gum at Costco. You better be 98 years old. <laughs> Original 35 cent gum. Okay. I don't think it was 35 cents originally. I bet it was like a, a, a single penny farthing. But let's think about this. A stick of double mint gum has to cost like two cents. <laughs> maybe, maybe four cents and there's 200 sticks in the John. Okay. So that's like eight bucks. I think it's going to be six ninety nine, bro. I don't. I think this is price to move. <laughs> Ooh.
But here's the thing, right? If this is actually what the packaging looks like in Costco, you're not paying 12 bucks for it. If you're paying 12 bucks for it, that's, that's non-Costco prices. Today's price is not yesterday's price. You got to be getting a bargain. You're probably right. They probably put 12 bucks on the box so that you're like, holy cow, a lifetime supply of double mint gum for like 45% off. Buying gum is crazy, man. Like one pack at the checkout lane of the grocery store is one thing. But buying 40 packs of gum at Costco is fucking... That's crazy. How did I get here? <laughs> I don't know. Stop scratching me. I do have to, I, I have to check out Strand. Everyone's telling me, telling me to check out New York Times Strands. Hello, Tomo, hello. <clears throat> Bahamas. If there was ever, a, I can finally see where I went. So I'm assuming that maybe something like here is the, British Virgin Islands, and then like this is the U.S. Virgin Islands, <laughs> something like that. You pretty much got it. Farther down, farther down, really, like down, down here. I'm just gonna say, and this would be the the end of me, but um, if you get off a cruise ship, the border guard should say. Um, can you point to where you are on a map right now? It, it, like, step one, do you know the name of the country you're about to visit and buy four t-shirts from? Four of the worst t-shirts that you've ever seen in your entire life? I'd be like, yeah, British Virgin Islands. They said, point to it on the map. Don't let me in. I don't know where, I didn't know where it was. And I'm, and I'm embarrassed that I don't. I'm not saying like, oh, it's a good thing. You should be happy I'm bringing my Canadian dollars to the British Virgin, No. They should say you have not shown an ample amount of respect to do even the slightest bit of preparation. They should, they should have barred me from entry and told me to get back on the boat. 600 kilometers. It's the Dominican Republic. It's Haiti! By the way, can I tell you? I had two very interesting Uber experiences um, while we were in the United States of America. The first was when the Uber driver recognized me at the end of the ride and said, hey, random question, are you a streamer? And I said, I am. And then he said, are you the streamer who did that clip about the picky eaters? And I said, yes, that's probably me. And then he was like, I was looking at you in the mirror and I was like, is this the effing guy? Is this the effing guy who did that picky eaters thing? This effing guy? And I was, I was just laughing and going, ha, ha, ha. You know, he was, he was listening to Fahrenheit 451 audiobook. He seemed like a cool guy. He said, if you have any questions about Orlando, let us know or let me know. But then I also had an Uber drive where I was 100% sure that Kate and I were going to be killed, full stop. What happened? On the day we were leaving Orlando to get on the boat, we got an Uber from our hotel uh, and we went into the ride. We loaded in our suitcase and stuff like that. The guy seemed very nice. Uh, we got to like the first turn. We drove like 100 meters. And then he said, whoa. Did you cancel on the app? What happened? And then like we looked at his little kiosk and we looked at our phone and like somehow the ride had become disconnected. And uh, he said, wait, so like this happens now and then? Do you want me to bring you back to the hotel? And I said, yeah, I guess we can do that. He said, or I could just drive you all the way to the cruise terminal anyway and you could just you know venmo me or whatever and i said okay um let's go back to the hotel but kate was like that sounds good <laughs> and i was like you know what we're gonna get killed 
I was like checking my phone to make sure that like we were still moving to the east. Everything ended up working out just fine. But there was like 45 minutes of me being like, this is the end of my life. Hi, honey. Whoa, such pretty nails. And, and you get to have it too. Yeah, I'll take some when I'm finished, okay? You can take the green one. Okay. I can't do a tea party right now, honey. Can you do a tea party with mommy and daddy will do it after work? Sorry, only sparkly nails. Only sparkly nails can do the tea party? Yes, only sparkly nails can do a grown up. Oh, so you invited me to the tea party, but I'm not even allowed to come. Okay. Thanks, mom. <laughs> and people are saying he was just cutting out Uber. Honestly? Cool rock, honey. You can keep it. Okay, you can take that rock. I kind of respected it. If, as long as he didn't kill me, I was happy to pay him cash and cut out Uber. I would much rather do a taxi than an Uber, except for the fact that, like, probably the last 10 taxis I took before Uber came to Vancouver drove like 40 kilometers an hour over the speed limit, two centimeters from the bumper of the car in front of them while talking on their cell phone incredibly loudly the whole time and like asking me the route that I want to go to the airport. And I'm like, I don't know, brother, you're literally a professional driver. That's what my Ubers do now? <laughs> well, we need a new Uber, man. We need, we need comfortable Uber. You should be able to hit like a button on your Uber drive that is like, don't drive fast. Or if you're in a rush, you could fucking click drive fast. But I'm like, I would, I would give you like an extra... 5% tip if you just didn't have me like holding the handle in the Chrysler Pacifica the whole time. What am I doing? I'm so like out of practice. 5% tip. But the Pacifica is so nice. Bro, every time I'm in a, an Uber that's a van, I'm like, I'm reaching that age. I got to buy a van. When I'm, when I'm in the second row of the van, I'm like, holy fuck, bro. They got pilot seats in this bitch. It's not like bench seating in the back. It's pilot seats. And then the person driving the van is always like, they're, they're like the closest thing to like a, a pilot that you can get in a car. They got their whole command center up at the front. Like they can control all the doors from their little console. They got like overhead buttons and stuff like that. And like, it's, it seems incredible, bro. They got so much storage. Hard to park in the city, that's for sure. But this is Mexico flipped horizontally. This is on the east. This is Croatia. It's not Croatia. It's on the east coast of Africa. It's Ethiopia. It's not on the coast. That's bad. It's Cameroon, which is on the coast. <laughs> okay. It's the Central African Republic. Mm, it's Angola. Mm, it's... Uh, <laughs> God is my witness. I have absolutely no idea. I don't know what the fuck Burundi looks like. Congo! <laughs> oh, okay, okay. All 
know. Honestly, same as it ever was. Italy, but the dog ate the boot. Oh, we're screwed, bro. February of last year? That I had in February of last year. I got potential rushing and rushing around. You know what I'm saying? It's Valentine's Day 2023. It really should be easy enough. What 20th Century Fox movie was freaking popping, bro? It had been out since December, and it made $657 million. Directed by actor two, Zoe Saldana. Avatar? <laughs> it took me a second. It took me a second. Okay, there we go. Avatar. Damn, James Cameron really the goat, huh? Week 10, 9% drop-off. Week 9, 4% drop I mean, listen, you're starting to peter out a little bit there, but... Disney movie opened to $106 million last year. This, this strikes me as Wakanda Forever or um, Thor Love and Thunder. I feel like it's Wakanda Forever. I feel like it's Thor, Love and Thunder. I feel like it's in, I feel like it's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I feel like it's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. <laughs> we get these, we get these. Warner Brothers. Week two, starring Channing Tatum. Magic Mike's Last Dance. I mean, that's a given. It's not some obscure art house film like Ant-Man and the Wasp Quant Quantumania. <laughs> Universal. Week nine, great long tale on Antonio Banderas. This is the uh, most realistic depiction of a panic attack ever put to screen. Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. And $30 million universal film starring Dave Batista. This is a knock at the cabin. He's done it. 67%? Dude, that's pretty good. If only my ass knew Ant-Man 3 and Avatar, we would have been fucking cruising today, bro. This 97-year-old cat still makes panic attacks the most realistic old-fashioned way. Are you being sarcastic about Puss in Boots? Listen, I'm not trying to get the animation is real cinema horde knocking at my door. I'm merely making a reference to uh, when Puss in Boots went viral for its depiction of a panic attack, at which point people replied and said, you need to watch real movies, at which point people replied and said animated movies are real movies, and it's just, uh, you know... Take a look at the lawman beating up the wrong guy. Oh man, wonder if he'll ever know. They're in the best-selling show. You know what I'm saying? Just another trip around the damn sun. It's crazy that it's only a year ago. You should do Broadway? What are you talking about? Commercial Broadway, where the baklava man is hawking his wares? Channing, Jesse Eisenberg heist Woody Harrelson. Now you see me. Wesley Snipes basketball, Woody Harrelson. White men can't jump. Samuel L. Jackson, basketball. Coach Carter. Coach. Carter. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused, man. It's the shapes are not shaping, man. Uh, magicians. You've been served. A dance movie, of course. 
Rosie Perez, you've been, this is Pineapple Express, stoners. Rosie Perez must be in White Men Can't Jump. Channing Tatum is in Coach Carter. I did not know that. And Blade! It's Blade! We get these. Swaps left seven. That was a pretty good one. Your mother. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. Have you ever seen Blade in the modern era? The car chase in Blade is one of the funniest shots, I think. And I love it because it actually has style. Like, they, they swung for the fences on the car chase in Blade when he is following the, the supplicant. <laughs> I wish when movies weren't afraid to be a little silly, man. A little goofy. Um, movies about King Arthur. Green Knight, Monty Python, and the Holy Grail. Sword in the Stone. I'm assuming Excalibur. Anaconda, Deliverance. Movies with John Voight. A Ghost Story. A24 elevated uh, supernatural horror film starring Casey Affleck. The Jungle Book, Pete's Dragon, movies directed by John Favreau. Okay, he did not direct, um, he might not have directed any of this shit. Old Man and the Gun, Clint Eastwood, Snake Eyes, Nicolas Cage, The General, I'm going to assume that's John Voight, The Aristocats, animated Disney films. No. Hmm. Movies with a, with a treacherous snake. Snake Eyes, <laughs> The Jungle Book, Anaconda. No! Deliverance goes here. Where the fuck is John Voight, bro? <laughs> Where's Deliverance, Anaconda. How many swaps? I have nine swaps. It's so gettable. It's possible John Voight is in The Old Man and the Gun. It's possible that he is in Point Blank. Yeah, he's... What is this? Not John Voight! <clears throat> Five swaps left, huh? I don't know what these are. I know what Deliverance is, but the rest of them, I'm like... Oh, you're right. Green is the connector. Green is the connector. Oh, wait, 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 wait. It's, uh, with five swaps, it's all coming together. Um, Disney's animated classics. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, what do we got? Two swaps? Hi, you okay? Oh, you took your nails off? I took, a, I took my ugly nails off and I swallowed through the pots into the trash can. Okay, that's, that's fine. Here, why don't you bring your chair over here? I got, I got mommy blanket and my mommy TV. Here, here, here. I got you wishes to... That's one, but mommy said, no, daddy just went. It's Dev Patel. It's Jared Harris. You know anything else about the Green Knight? No. I think it's a tale about Sir Galahad's um, quest to make a name for himself in the court of Camelot and uh, the absurd levels that he's willing to go to make that happen. Perhaps even the self-destructive uh, tendencies he's willing to embrace in order to get just a taste from the goblet of fame. I got 
Gallagher from Kabbalah. What? I serious. <laughs> it's not Galahad, it's Sir Gawain. Okay. Isn't that like a menswear store? No. <laughs> I don't think Jared Harris is in the Green Knight. Bro, he plays the Green Knight, right? I've never seen it. Um, the Green, the Green Knight. The Green Knight. That's Dev Patel? No, Dev Patel is, is Sir Gowan, bro. Jared Harris is the tree man. Oh, no, that's Ralph Innocent. You're right. I don't know what I'm talking about then. I got two swaps left, right? This is it's un, it's mathematically doable, but I don't know. This has got to be John Voight, bro. John Voight is not in the Holy Grail, so he must be in this John right here. No, no. Chad, is it possible? <laughs> I'm so washed. What happened, man? What happened? Okay, let's see. Excalibur point blank, the general deliverance. It's got to be John Voight. D Director John Borman? The Green Knight, Pete's Dragon, the Old Man and the Gun, Ghost Story. Director David Lowry. Brother, that is... I respect them for going. This is a tough puzzle, man. These were all composed by the Sherman brothers. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. We're waiting at the start of every day. There's a great big beautiful tomorrow. And tomorrow is just a day away. And then uh, all these titles have snake in them. Uh, snakes, I see. I understand it now. It's not tough if you understand the game. Okay, number one John Borman fan in the chat. I wasn't trying to insult you. Like, uh, Deliverance, you know, it has a legacy beyond just... Ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding -a -ding tea Party! I don't know John Borman, but I understand the game, so I got it. Fucking dismissive ass. You could just say it was tough. And then I ask if you got it. You got to, like, embarrassingly go, yeah. Instead, you got to be like, just so you know, I'm smarter than you. Fucking, okay, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Go back to being interviewed by Vulture about how, like, science fiction isn't a documentary. Pedantic ass. It's too much power. I apologize. It's too hard, but that you see in the plus twos after someone insults your intelligence feels fucking feels sick, bro. You recognize I haven't been able to yell at someone for like 10 days, right? Hancock to full metal jacket. Jason Bateman. Will Smith, Charlize Theron. Vincent D'Onofrio, it's easy. You go Will Smith, Men in Black 1, Vincent D'Onofrio, Full Metal Jacket. That's, that's your, your hot swap. So let's just say, we got that. That's a gimme. Let's go, let's, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's, let's try to take a slightly different tact here, okay? Let's go. I know where I want to go, okay? It's... <laughs> Eddie Marzan, The World's End. Simon Pegg, some British movie that has Steve Coogan in it. Tropic Thunder, Jack Black, Saving Silverman, R. Lee Ermey. Let's make the prophecy come true. Eddie Marzan, The World's End. Simon Pegg, a British movie that also features Steve Coogan. <laughs> before, before he blew up, 
maybe just post Shaun of the Dead maybe would be where I would look for this personally. And then we got to find something that looks extremely British, like Darren Brown behind the mischief or Scrat's Continental Crack Up. Star Trek. Run, fat boy, run. Take you to Hank Azaria. Hank Azaria is in every movie that's ever been made. Here's what I'm thinking. We're going to go run, fat boy, run. Hank Azaria. Gross point blank. <clears throat> Jeremy Piven. Serendipity. Kate Beckinsale. Sahara. Um, Rain Wilson. No, Steve Zahn saving Silverman. Run, Fat Boy, Run. Hank Azaria. Gross Point Blank. Mini Driver. No, Jeremy Piven. Jeremy Piven, bro. Serendipity. Kate Beckinsale. Sahara. She's not in fucking... She's not in Sahara, bro. Why did I think that Kate Beckinsale was in Sahara? Who, who's the, the female lead in Sahara? Penelope Cruz. Penelope Cruz. Now make fucking Kate Beckinsale. All she's done is the Underworld films, man. Or uh, no, I gotta, uh, There's no choice. You have to go Van Helsing. And then maybe like uh, Michael Sheen played the bad guy. Oh, Richard Roxburgh. What the hell is this, man? They filmed this shit in Bucharest. Oh, brother. Okay, okay. So we, we simply find another, another tact, okay? So we're going to go Hugh Jackman. Hmm. The Greatest Showman. Zac Efron. Neighbors 2. Sorority Rising. Chloe Grace Moretz. Kick-Ass 1? No. Kick-Ass 2. Aaron Taylor Johnson, Bullet Train, Hiroyuki Sonata, The Last Samurai, Tom Cruise, Tropic Thunder, Jack Black, Saving Silverman, Arlie Ermey is in there somewhere, okay? Now, I need you to keep me honest on this one, okay? Hugh Jackman, The Greatest Showman, Zac Efron, Neighbors 2, Sorority Rising, Chloe Grace Moretz, Kick-Ass 1? No. Kick-Ass 2. Aaron Taylor Johnson. Bullet Train. Hiroyuki Sonata. The Last Samurai. Tom Cruise. Tropic Thunder. Jack Black. Saving Silverman. R. Lee Ermey. Sorry, sir. R. Lee Ermey, Full Metal Jacket time. <laughs> oh, let's go, bro! Why do you do it like this? Because it's funny. And also, I think it's a good exercise for your brain to uh, try to keep as many links in the chain going as possible. Also, we did know it was two. Yeah, we said Will Smith, Men in Black, Vincent D'Onofrio, Full Metal Jacket. He played frickin' um, Gomer Pyle. Show the shortest to confirm your first guess? I don't need to. Will Smith is in Hancock. That motherfucker is definitely in Men in Black. He plays Agent fucking J, I think, or K. And then the, the aliens played by Vincent D'Onofrio who is Gomer Pyle from Full Metal Jacket. It, it plays itself. That was a fun one. That was, dude. From Eddie Marzon to Tom Cruise. Is that the two they used? They used a much more incendiary two. 
Independence Day to Adam Baldwin, the full metal jacket. It is kind of crazy to think, like, I mean, obviously it was talked about a lot in the moment. But my man really slapped the host of the Oscars and then won Best Actor like an hour and a half later. That's a hell of a night. That's not a forgettable night. That's like a once in a lifetime sort of experience. <laughs> That's crazy. Best actor is the most cooked category. Who won this? It must have been uh, Killian Murphy, right? Because Oppie won everything. Yes. Robert Downey Jr. got Best Supporting Actor for Thor uh, Love and Thunder. This is Metal Gear Solid 2. Metacritic score of 89%. <clears throat> Persona 3 Reloaded. PC, PS4, Xbox One, PS5, Xbox Series. This is like deadly premonition text, but obviously it isn't. PC, PS4, Xbox One. I don't know what it is, man. It, oh, I do. It's a Yakuza game. <laughs> this is like a dragon. 2024. It's infinite wealth. It just came out. I got to be honest, I can't keep the, um, the Yakuza series straight. It's like four years ago, they made like Yakuza 5 or something like that. And then now they've, they've made Like a Dragon, Yakuza 6, Yakuza 0, Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. It's like there's a new Yakuza game that comes out like every eight months. I'm not knocking it. People seem to love them. Also, as I understand it, there's, they don't take themselves seriously, which I respect. Don't forget about Lost Judgment. <laughs> Whole Foods Market is now on Instacart. Tired of paying $8 for three apples? Introducing $10 for three apples. <laughs> Listen, buddy. This is the phantom pain. Don't even start with me. Tactical espionage action. Did I say real words there? <laughs> Tactical espionage action. I feel like I missed a C or something. Gamedal! Thank you for this, the gifted subscriptions, Gamedal. Thank you. All right, Gamedal. Nuts on the table. This one's for you, okay? I see a ghost, and I see like a castle. I believe this is the game known as Hogwarts Legacy. This shit is 13 Dead End Drive. It's a haunted house with spirits coming out of it. Mysterium. I don't have that one yet. You might want to add that one. That's a good one. This is uh, House of the Dead. This shit is the Rocky Horror Picture Show, actually, just to be clear. This is Super Ghouls. Ghouls? Ghosts? Super Ghosts and Goblins. This is the... This is Kingdom Hearts! It's Kingdom Hearts! When you walk away, you won't hear me... That's not... That's not Oogie Boogie. Disney's Epic Mickey. <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's Oogie Boogie, bro. He's the Oogie Boogie Bugle Boy from Company D. Now this is epic. Game they'll guess. Okay. This is where you check to see if your brain's screwed on straight. Lay 
I don't know why I'm going to start with. You know what? Let's try Animal Crossing New Horizons. Hmm. It's an isometric slash bird view. Would it be funny if we called like other games based on uh, what animal looks like it's looking at the game? Like if you were playing like uh, Subnautica and I was like, you know, it's like a dolphin's eye view game or something like that. Bird's eye view is kind of funny. Worm's eye view. A shy halud to you as well, my friend. So it came out on the Nintendo Switch, which means it couldn't be earlier than like 2016 or so. It's isometric. It was not made by Nintendo. Lots of stuff came out on the Switch. It's very popular. Balatro came out on the Switch. By the way, I felt like a genius. I downloaded Balatro the night before we left on our flight. Made sure it booted and everything. Go to the airport in the morning, see the tweet that Nintendo ripped it off of the damn app store because uh, it's getting kids addicted to gambling because it's too good. I never felt like I dodged a bullet like that. Now, I still got to slay the spire on my phone, so even if I didn't get Balladry, I would have been okay, but still, that flight freaking flew by. Apparently, it's back on now, which is good. It's not a baby game either. It's not a baby game. Hades. Hmm. The Underworld. Hmm. Wow, it's a, an indie role-playing hack-and-slash beat-em-up with themes of drama, perhaps, from earlier than 2018. It's um, um, uh, uh, Hyper Light Drifter. Hmm. Didn't come out on the Switch, actually. And it's earlier than 2016. We're back in the damn... Fucking the, take you back to the past to play the shitty games that were probably pretty good, if I had to guess. <sighs> the Binding of Isaac Rebirth. Earlier than 2014. See, now this is interesting. So it's pre-Switch, and then it came to the Switch later. Little game by the name of Hotline Miami 1. Mm, it did come out in 2012, a great era. A great era for indie games, some might say. It was isometric as well. Hmm. Perhaps a little game that is not by the name of Bastion because it was not made by Supergiant. And it wasn't made in 2012. Isometric bird view. And you're walking and you're going... Fum, fum, sum, sum, tum, 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 do, 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 do. Action adventure RPG indie in the isometric genre. In the Ogre engine. Super sword and sorcery. 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 Mark of the Ninja. Not isometric bird view, but... <laughs> oh, we're cooked. I'm going to know it 100%. I'm going to know it, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to annoy me, probably. And that's fine. It really feels gettable. I mean, like, Indie 2012, I was there, man. I was there at the first can show in Cologne. Much like the author in LCD Sound Systems Magnum Opus, Losing My Edge, I didn't really do anything except consume the content and be aware of its greatness at the time, but I'm going to take the credit nonetheless. Don't Starve. It's not made by clay, so why are you, playing, why are you putting Don't Starve in there, bro? You got the platforms exactly right. All I have to do is think of a game that came out on Linux, PC, Mac... PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Mario. You got me. You got me. It's Dr. Mario. 
Dr. Mario. Mario, Mario's cookie, Mario Golf Super Rush. Uh, okay, that's, listen, it is gettable, but fair enough. Torchlight 2, it's a good action RPG. Fair enough. It was Torchlight. I know this game, I had simply forgotten it. Holy cow, it's, all, it's past 11 o'clock. And I wanna rock. What song is 11 o'clock? That's Saturday night's all right for fighting. We gotta skip ahead here a little bit, man. <laughs> this is too, I'm going too slow. <laughs> it's like, it's gonna be a three hour dulls. I get visited by my child like four times. Let's go straight to movie grid. It's not like I have anything to do after it anyway. This is so easy. One word title. Number one guess, The Departed. You don't say The Departed. Number two guess, motherfucking Batman, 1989. We take those. Three or more word title. Five easy pieces. 4.9%, we'll take that. Released from 1980 to the year 2000. Okay. You say as good as it gets. Really should be able to think of more. Kind of weak on the Jack Nicholson side, but we'll take that. As good as it gets is kind of goaded. Oh, really? You like the movie? Which means you uh, agree with all of the choices that Jack Nicholson makes in the movie, like throwing this dog down his trash compactor. Yes, I do. All right. Fair enough. Based, based. Not really. One word title for Sigourney Weaver. You ever hear of Ghostbusters, bro? No, you ever hear of Heartbreakers, bro? <laughs> now we're talking. Oh, least Photoshopped thumbnail of all time. Man, it's actually so funny that like, Gene Hackman's last three movies are all fucking abominations. He's <laughs> got like a Heartbreakers, Welcome to Mooseport, and uh, Behind Enemy Lines starring Owen Wilson. No wonder the dude's on diners, drive-ins, and dives now. It's so, I, I mean this sincerely, it's so inspirational that he's 94 years old and he just goes to the Wendy's drive through what more could we possibly want out of our lives at that age? Like, that's crazy. Three or more word title for Sigourney Weaver. She's been a lot of stuff, man. Avatar 2, The Way of Water, I'm assuming. Cedar Rapids, Finding Dory. <laughs> it's true, it's true. It is true, Sigourney, Sigourney Weaver, Ghostbusters, Sigourney, Sigourney. What the fuck have you been in, Sigourney? Except for the Alien movies and Cedar Rapids and Ghostbusters, bro. Okay, well, check this out, Ghostbusters. I got to think about this shit, man. It shouldn't be hard. I guess I got to say Avatar 2, The Way of Water. I got to be honest. I don't, I don't have a better guess. So I got I to gotta ask the audience on that one. Val Kilmer, one word title. You know that's going to be heat number one. So we say MacGruber. Oh! 2.8. I'll take that. Oh, you're so right. Cabin in the Woods would have been would have been a classic there. She's in that. Val Kilmer, three or more word title. Kiss, kiss. And then, if you're lucky, bang, bang. Oh, fuck. <laughs> okay. 1980 to 2000. You could always, you could throw in a heat here if you have to. 
otherwise, what the hell is Val Kilmer in? Top Gun, obviously. Ba Batman Forever. Riddle me this. Why is Batman... What is this? A fucking, like, um, parody movie? <laughs> this is like... A, <laughs> Batman Forever comes out in 1995, 1996. Riddle me this, colon. How the Joker found out if Batman truly was forever and his heart will go on? I can live with this. Top 13%. Only one most common guess. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Should have gone with the Prince of Egypt. There's just one problem. I have never seen it. I thought I saw it when I was insanely high, but I'm pretty sure that that was actually the road to El Dorado. But I don't remember shit about either of them. <laughs> to be honest with you. <laughs> I couldn't tell you anything about them. And then, like, I got... So I get the road to El Dorado confused with Emperor's New Groove. It's all... It's all mixed up up here. Hang on, I'm selecting all squares with bicycles. Darted, a verb meaning to throw with a sudden movement. Darted, a verb meaning to throw with a sudden We get these. Gradual, a adjective meaning I moving, changing, gradual. or developing by f cost. A noun meaning the amount or a... <laughs> yes, I know. Godspeed, a no. noun meaning a prosperous journey. Pulpit, a noun meaning an elevated platform or high reading desk. This shit is not easy, bro. Pulpit? Resilience. A noun mean nuts on the table. We're going we're going five for five for medium, guaranteed. Otherwise you can chop one of my nuts off. Hyrax. A noun meaning any It crashed. The game crashed. I'm sorry. <laughs> game the game crashed. <laughs> one second, one second. Did I hear you right? Hyrax. A noun meaning any of a family, Procaviti, of small ungulate mammals of Africa and the Middle East, mm, okay, characterized racks. by thick set body with short legs and ears and short rudimentary legs. tail, okay. feet with soft pads and broad nails, and teeth of which the molars resemble those of the rhinoceros and the incisors those of rodents, called also coney, dassy. The word hyrax originates from the Greek word hy- Nuts on the table, boys. Nuts on the table. <laughs> hieroglyphics, a noun meaning hieroglyph. Hieroglyphic. That's what we get for hieroglyphics? I, I just got the entire genomic sequence for like a rat that lives in the Sahara Desert. And they're like hieroglyphics, you know them when you see them. Fleetness. An adjective meaning swift and motion. Fleetness. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add that one to the vocabulary. He had the fleetness. Protectorate. A noun meaning government by a protector. Easy mode. Next round, we made it. Surcease. A <laughs> verb meaning to desist from action. Also, to come to an end. Cease. The word comes from... Surcease! Or molu. A noun meaning golden or gilded brass or bronze used for decorative purposes, as in mounts for furniture. Moulu originates from French, meaning ground gold. Or molu. A noun meaning golden or gilded brass or bronze used for decorative purposes, as in mounts for furniture. Moulu originates from French, meaning ground gold. Or molu. A noun meaning golden or gilded brass or bronze a used for, for decorative gold. purposes, as in Mou. mounts for furniture. Moulu originates Mou. from French, meaning ground gold. Lou. Or molu. Or a noun molu. meaning golden or, or gilded molu. brass. Oh. <laughs> I thought for sure, bro. I thought for sure. She was looking like a type of sausage at a New Orleans restaurant. I thought we had it. Codswallop. A noun meaning words or ideas. So give me, I use it every day. Lebensraum. A noun okay, meaning territory believed to... Listen. Jains. A noun meaning an adherent of Jainism. The word Jain originates... 
Think I didn't play Crusader Kings 2, motherfucker? One word wrong. Or Molu. Oh my god, they fucking anglicized the shit out of this. They beat that word's damn ass when it came over, man. Or Molu. <laughs> they even took out the AU that indicated that it was gold in the first place. They said, fuck that, man. Gold in French is OR. I like your nurse's uniform, guy. These are OR scrubs. Oh, are they? <laughs> oh, man. This looks really bad, but I bet it tastes great. I, something about the fucking, just the, I get that there's a reason for it. Why the fuck is the garlic just in there? Or is that even, maybe it's, those are cashews, never mind. Uh, when I see cashews in a dish, I, I tend to think maybe it's North African or African cuisine. Meat, chicken, lamb, or beef. Yogurt, often used in... South Asian and Mediterranean cooking. Maybe it is, gar maybe it's, no, it's probably cashews. Almonds, cashews, and raisins. <sighs> let, me, let me go Morocco on this. Nuts on the table. Take me to Casablanca. That's cold. Oh, they've, they've changed the game. That's cold. Um, a, what appears to be a braised chicken dish dating back to the 16th century. It's derived from the word for braise. Marinating meat in yogurt and spices, then cooking it slowly. Coconut milk as well. You know what? This kind of looks like it could be like a bone-in Cambodian sort of curry type deal. It's a little warmer. Could it... Well, let's see the name. Korma. Oh! I have to be honest with you, okay? I eat Indian food two times a month. I would love to eat it even more often. I really can't tell you the difference between a, a, a korma, a tikka masala, a Rogan Josh, a Joe Rogan. I, I, all I know is it, it all tastes amazing and I don't know what happens in the kitchen, but keep up the great work. I could tell you the difference between a naan and a paratha and a roti for sure, but when it gets into the sauces, it's I know buttered chicken. Buttered chicken is, is typically orange or yellow. The rest of them, I just, literally, it all sounds good. You should be able to walk into the Indian restaurant and just say, surprise me. It's all meat or vegetables in sauce, and it's, it's always great. This looks like a, it looks fucking amazing. Um, it, it looks like savory baklava, which to me, emblematic of the Mediterranean. I don't want to get into any sort of sensitive topics here. Maybe there's a, a Spanakopita. I mean, is there like a, I always associate it with Greek food, but maybe it has like a Turkish or, I don't know, a Georgian sort of element to it. I'm going to say this is Greece. It's warm. A delectable pastry. That it's kind of a value judgment. It offers a unique taste experience as you take a bite of delicate and flaky exterior. Was this written by the fucking CEO of, of Baklava? Each bite delivers a satisfying balance. And it's an experience that leaves you longing for another bite. It looks good, bro. You don't have to keep up the glazing. Mm. What is a... This is a Turkish Okonomiyaki. This is a... This is from the nation of Georgia. That's hot. It's from the nation of Lebanon. It's from the nation of Turkey. Borek. You got me. Borek is a traditional Turkish pastry with a history dating back to the Ottoman Empire. Hang on, we got a, a Dio Guiga message here. I ate... Borek, when I was in Croatia, I mentioned this to a Cro Croatian co-worker and he hates me now. I don't know what's 
I mean, maybe they got strong feelings about uh, the origins of cuisines over here. I, I, I'm just completely ignorant to it culturally, but I remember that uh, Am I the Asshole Reddit post where people were getting into it over whether Santa was like Greek or Turkish. It's very serious. I never really thought of Santa as Greek or Turkish. I always thought of him kind of as like um, like Pennywise. Like he kind of just existed. You're like, where did he come from? He didn't. He just was always there. Even when he wasn't, he was. It's hard to explain. <laughs> but if he's from anywhere, he's probably from Canada because we have like the whole Hudson's Bay up to the Arctic to the North Pole kind of part. Like, okay, yeah, I get that there's like contested dominion going on up there. But at the same time, like, okay, if, if he is from Greenland and fucking walk from Greenland to the North Pole, bitch, I doubt you're going to do it. You're not going to be portaging your fucking canoe across the Arctic Ocean. Anyway. You ever see The Terror? Now that's a show. This is, the ingredient is bird's nest, bird's nest, water, sweetener, salt, and other flavorings. What the hell is this, bro? This is a munchos? This is from China. It must be. Bird's nest soup. That is not soup, okay? That's not soup. It's made from the saliva of swift-lit birds. It is enjoyed in many countries in Asian. So, is this, is this true? The nest is constructed from the bird's saliva? I always thought it was like they just used noodles that looked like a bird's nest. It's good. I might try it. It's not like it's that much weirder than, you know, something with milk in it. We don't need to get into that again, but... Oh my God, they made it harder? <laughs> oh no, no, no. Dude, they follow my advice. Update, we made the game harder by only displaying two cast members. Oh, so this is Barry Pepper and th this is just the lady, man. I don't know who this is. I'm so happy they changed it though. So I think of a Barry Pepper movie. I'm a simple man. I go 25th hour. No, okay. Second Barry Pepper movie. Easy. Nuts on the table. Saving Private Ryan. Woody Harrelson. Barry Pepper. <laughs> and a stock image of somebody writing a news article. Um, Woody Harrelson. Barry Pepper, huh? Rampart, maybe? No, they don't have that one. Uh, um, um, um... Um, Blue Chip. He's not even in that one. Um, it's not, I don't think it's just Kingpin, bro. I would recognize it. Zombie Land <laughs> Double Tap. I haven't seen that one. He might be, okay. Rosario Dawson, Woody Harrelson, Barry Pepper. I love that they made this harder, man. I still have no clue. Is this solo? Was, did they soft launch Asuka live action in solo? Will Smith, Rosario, da oh, it's, is it 27 pounds? Or uh, 120, 12 grams? 12, um, uh, 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 the, no, 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 hang on, it's the, <laughs> 12, seven pounds, seven pounds, seven pounds, seven pounds. You got it, the answer is seven pounds, we got it. They have made this game so much better. As soon as... You, well, you guys don't know who Elpedia Carrillo is? That's a good one. Barry Pepper is Dan. Ben's nameless brother. Oh, man. They have, that is, is working its way up the damn list. Barry Pepper, I loved you as Dan in the Traders Season 2 documentary. I guess it wouldn't be a documentary. Okay. 
Christopher Nolan, Tom Hardy. That's a tough one. Tom Hardy, one word title. Bronson. 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 Tom Hardy, director Christopher Nolan. Inception. We could go Dark Knight Rises, but that's going to be number one. Oscar nominee for cinematography. Mad Maximum. Fury Road. Mad Max Fury Road seems like one of those movies that probably has funny titles in other languages. Like, you can't tell me that in Romania this isn't called, like, Angry Maximilian and the Highway of Hatred or something like that. Killian Murphy, one word title. Oppenheimer. He's so real for this. But the cinematography is the catch. Let me think about this. Marco Kain, Marco Kain, one word title. Alfie. Marco Kain, Christopher Nolan. Everything. What is everything he's ever done? Let's go the prestige on this one. Because my guess is that uh, Interstellar was nominated for cinematography. No! Because it takes place in outer space. They probably didn't even use a real camera. Oh. <laughs> really? Okay. Children of men. Strawberry cough. A horrible poster, man. No disrespect. Absolutely. God-awful poster. Couldn't they have a poster of, like, the, the balloon where they play in the Court of the Crimson King or something like that? Okay. So you go... You go, Batman Begins. The cinematography is the tough spot because they weren't nominating Sunshine for cinematography in 2006. I'm sorry, they just weren't doing it. The Academy didn't have stones back then. Crash was winning Best Picture. They didn't have the nuts. So there's a, there's a Killian Murphy film I'm forgetting about. So the best thing you could do would probably be go Oppie, Batman Begins. You could even go Dark Knight Rises where he makes his return and is probably going to be less guessed because when Batman Begins, he's the principal villain. You go Oppenheimer here. Oh, and then you go fucking Sunshine, one word title, dummy. Oh, no, I don't have any more guesses. <laughs> Top 41% though. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Nice. So long ass dolls, bro. Oh, Dunkirk, of course, Dunkirk. Am I really playing Isaacle? I no, I can't. I'm sorry. It can't be done. New York Times strands. Find hidden words and uncover the day's theme. Can I interest you in actoral grid? Hang on, hold that thought for a second. Find theme words to fill the board. Banana, apple, fruit, lime. I get it, okay. Theme words fill the board entirely. No words overlap. Find the spangram. It describes the puzzle's theme and touches two opposite sides of the word. Need a hint? Find non-theme words to get hints. Okay. Today's theme, to put it mildly. Remark. That's not a correct word. Understandable. Other words that I see. Mm. Mid. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh, Peters. Hmm. Do. Hmm. They have to be longer than that many words, I suppose. They're longer than that many letters. Sus. Mm, said hmm, a hint please darn these will be fake swear words 
I understand. Now I know what I'm looking for. Drat. Fooey. What? Okay, never mind. I'm okay. What? That fits, bro. Moot me. <clears throat> Dang. Dang. Sheesh. Crud. Mm. Poop. Poop. <laughs> poop is a is a mild swear word for shit. Heck. Okay, you got me on that one, and it must fill up the whole word. Isms. You. F. Misms. There we go. That's a big one. Are we done here? Shoot. Jeepers. Hang on, it's all coming together. Golly. Fudge. And gadzooks. All right, that's reasonably fun. I could see that. Nice job finding the theme words and the spangram. You kind of destroyed it. Really? I kind of felt like I did bad, but I guess it was our first time. Okay, what the hell is actoral grid? D.L. Guiga says you used two hints. All right, D.L. Guiga, I saw your ass say you didn't even know that Christopher Nolan directed The Prestige. It's actually like his best movie, probably. You know, we've all got blind spots, brother. Where was your ass when Silicon Valley Bank was getting dragged for not adequately assessing their tail risk? Nassim Taleb. Really could have used you last March. What happened to Loving Tenant? I still love Tenant. Tenant is, Tenant is his best movie. Yeah, man, Tenant's his best movie. Absolutely. Where's Actoral Grid, man? How do I go to Actoral Grid? Shut up about Memento, okay? Tell me how to get to Actoral Grid. It's called Fill the Grid. Actoral, fill the grid. Actoral, fill the grid. Fill the grid with actors. The hell is this fucking... This looks like when you uh, check in at a hotel and you get a glimpse of the screen and they're using some kind of Microsoft Access UI from like 1986. I need a second to get my, uh, my sea legs. Common, actors common to the top, column's top movie and row's left movie. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, Wolf of Wall Street, Oscar-winning actor, actress, Leonardo DiCaprio. Correct. He's a genius. What do I do now? <laughs> um, let me think about this for a second. Midnight in Paris, King Kong. Star Wars The Last Jedi. I'm, I'm cooked, guys. I'm cooked. About Time. Does that have Margot Robbie in it? Ah, Star Wars The Last Jedi About Time. Domhnall Gleeson. Correct. Star Wars The Last Jedi. Okay, listen. You got Jack Black. You got Naomi Watts. You got Adrian Brody. And a lot of other guys, too. <laughs> uh, am I insane that this seems, like, really tough? Wolf of Wall Street. Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill. Leonardo DiCaprio. Margot Robbie. 
other people were in this movie. Um, um, uh, um, his name is escaping me. Um, he's the guy from Remember the Titans. He's the guy from Mallrats. Ethan Supley. Any chance Ethan Supley is in any of these? I don't think Owen Wilson has won Best Actor. Can, can I get a hint on this one? Like, this seems, this seems hard, man. This seems impossible. There's no hints? Okay, let's, let's go with the obvious guesses then. Rachel McAdams must be the love interest here in both movies. And then in King Kong, there, because my brain's getting the Adrian Brody and the Owen Wilson connected because of Wes Anderson, but neither of these involve Wes Anderson. And I don't think you, I don't think Adrian Brody's in you, and I don't think Owen Wilson's in you. It was Beauty that killed the Beast. Wow, Beauty killed the Beast. That's so thoughtful. I would have thought like it would be like a, like a like a big bow and arrow or something, but beauty, wow, I never would have thought of that. So insightful. And I honestly can't name a third actor from Midnight in Paris, so we're kind of cooked on this one. Who has won an Oscar? <laughs> uh, lots of people. Mm, lots of people. Lots of people have won Oscars. How about Star Wars The Last Jedi, Oscar-winning actor-actress? No shot Daisy Ridley's got an Oscar. I'm sorry. Maybe a BAFTA. Maybe. Star Wars The Last Jedi, King Kong, Adrian Brody, Benicio Del Toro, Jack Black, Jack Black, Finn Wolfhard, Jacob Elordi, Timothy Chalamet and Ansel Elgort star in Star Wars The Last Jedi featuring Oscar-nominated actor Barry Pepper, Billy Baldwin, musical guest Boy Genius. I give up, man! I don't know! This shit is, is hard, man! It's actually insanely easy. Holy cow! It's unbelievably easy. <laughs> Maybe I'm just mentally cooked. Holy, I'll add it. I'll add it to the list. All right, I'm going to slash marker. And we'll do... That's the dolls. The longest dolls of all time. And I'll be back in like two minutes. Daniel! Daniel! Thank you for the raid. I got to go to the bathroom. Stick around. What are we going to do after? I don't know. I got to go pee first, though. The bladder's still on Eastern time. Dan knows what's up. Bro, they got to study airport construction. Hey, 400 people are about to get in a cylinder 
with one tiny bathroom in it. You know what restaurant would go hard here? Chili's! What are you thinking? Are you stupid? Couldn't they put a restaurant with like some vegetables, bro? They're like, no, here, you, I'll tell you what, $7.99 margaritas and deep fried chicken gizzards. I got to say, though, you ever eat at uh, Bahama Breeze in the Orlando airport? Coconut shrimp did go pretty hard. Although I will say, this is a, um, a stereotype, I'm sure, of myself. They said, what do you have to drink? I said, uh, I'll take this IPA. And he said, our waiter, he said, um, I don't know why we have it on the menu. We've never had that. But what we do have is this local Orlando IPA. And I said, okay, I'll have that. And then he came back three minutes later and said, uh, actually, we don't have that either. We have Budweiser, Stella, and Shock Top. Is there anything I can get you? And I kid you not, I said, can I have the menu back? He gave me the menu. I looked at it for two minutes, and I said, I guess I'll take a Shock Top. <laughs> not... My favorite, but it's all right. I mean, I'm getting on an airplane. I'm not too picky. Disrespecting the Stella. I'm not a Stella guy. I'm very much an IPA guy. Also, I got uh, verbally abused at the... Orlando Airport, there was a convenience store where I bought some snacks that also had a bar in it. And the dude uh, came up with his empty glass and said, hey, can I get a Modelo? But please rinse the glass. I had an IPA in it. And I said, did you like it? And he said, no. They have a Belgian beer, a Mexican beer, and uh, an IPA. And if I had my choice, I would rather go to Belgium or Mexico instead of wherever they make IPAs. I was like, all right, buddy. I laughed and said, ha ha, good point. But in my head, I was like, I'm, I'm flying back to Vancouver in like 15 minutes, dickhead. <laughs> we don't want you either, motherfucker. Dan, how is, um, is it too early for me to hmm. hop on the new Bennett Foddy esque. Because I'm sorry, I'm not playing Balatro. It's not happening. You lost the privilege. Why? I'm not playing three hours of Balotro while 9,000 people go, hey, you're stupid, do this instead. And like half of them are right and half of them have no idea what they're talking about. Shit is like insanely frustrating. We loved it though. You show me the incentives, I'll show you the behavior, brother. Back me up, DL Guiga. I'm doing the climbing game. What's it called? Can you do my job for me? What's this game called and where could I find it? A difficult game about climbing. Thank you. A difficult... Difficult... Game about the climbing. 88% positive reviews, 863 reviews. Currently popular, user reviews very positive, 
four friends already own this game. Chibli, Justin, Dan, and Omrecker. It's got the content creator's seal of approval, bro. I will continue to my payment. I will enter my pin to exit family view. I will click install content. Install content will not work. So we will then go to the library and press the big install button. There you go. Holy cow, Chibli climbed all the way to the peak of the mountain. Congratulations. Have I really had Photoshop open for 11 days while I've been gone? I mean, that's just unforgivable. <laughs> the size of my damn scratch disc, bro. Hey, librarian. Thank you for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Please turn off your PC. Mm, change things in your life before you ask me to change things in mine. I know one of them is easier than the other. But one of them has more value to you, I promise. Are you not worried about an electrical fire? Bro, that's what the firefighters are for. I'm not worried about it. Listen, I'm not saying fire doesn't exist. I'm just saying... It's like getting struck by lightning, man. The whole house is fucking wired up. Dude, when you go... I, I, this is a real question. When you leave your house, do you switch off the fucking, like, the electrical main? Do you flip, like, a big switch with a large coil coming out of it and blue sparks and stuff like that? That's fucking crazy, bro. Do you live in Little House on the Prairie? In the modern world, you just tank it. If your house burns down, you got insurance. It's that simple. Just to be safe? There's nothing safe about life, man. Look at this. I, I turn my dishwasher on, and then I go to sleep. If that fucker springs a leak, I deal with it in the morning. My ass is not going to live my life to the fucking schedule of my dishwasher. Oh, I can't sleep right now. A machine is washing my dishes for me. You know, we invented it to make our life easier, right? Now I got to be, oh, I can't fucking go to bed. My, the dryer's running. What if the fucking dryer lights on fire and we all die? It's not, that's why you clean the lint trap, bozo. I don't even know what we're doing here. Well, that's not true. I know that we are playing a difficult game about climbing. I will say I uh, know nothing about it. Except that I know it is Bennett Foddy-esque. And you can definitely see the Bennett Foddy influence. I'm also feeling, uh, as I'm playing this right now, that this is not going to be good for any repetitive stress injury. <laughs> I imagine we have to climb this mountain. I like a good suffer core game, honestly, right? I think Dan is, uh, he's on to something. Do I need to turn this down? Is the splashing too much? You can use Q and E. You can use Q and E. Thank you so much for saving my life. Wait, it's actually the... With Q and E, it's actually the easiest game of all time. Yep. 
you will come to regret your words and your deeds. I know Chibli played it. I know Chibli beat it as well. Plus, he finished the game. <laughs> um, but that's not fair because Chibli is also a world record holder in the speed climbing event in Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Let me guess. The rock's a little slippery. No, not really. We free solo in this bitch. It's slippery. It's slippery. Move over. Anybody else watching this pure ass at climbing? I'm not afraid to be honest on this website. You know, that's what streaming's all about. I'm straight up garbage at climbing. I have been since I was a child. I think I, I, I continue to be bad at it as an adult. I have a strong lower body. And I think like disproportionately weak grip strength. I also derive no joy from climbing whatsoever. Watch this. I must, have, uh, I must have not got the gene expression that makes human beings enjoy climbing. Never really enjoyed climbing trees. Never did great on the, on the monkey bars. I was always more of a slide kid. Tag? I could get down with tag. Of course I can get down with tag. I mean, that's a classic. Was this right? <laughs> it just, it felt right. Okay, and then this is a slippery rock. We have to climb up the slippery rock and get to either the branch or the gray rock that we can hold on to. Slide legit F tier playground equipment? Speak on that, DL Guiga. What, you don't like gravity? That's okay, we're chilling. Climbing up sucks, and it lasts longer than going down. Listen, he's kind of spitting, but going down is so much more thrilling. You must fucking, oh no, everybody relax. You must hate uh, skiing then, DL Guiga, because you spend like, you know, 20 minutes on the lift. And then if you're good at skiing, it only takes you like two minutes to get down the hill. If you're acid skiing, it takes you like an hour because you got to stop every time there's like a new, uh, a, a place of flat ground where you can catch your breath and let your, your thighs fucking chill out for a second. Swings are better? Bro, you're crazy. Swing is like, you don't do anything. I know it sounds insane, but like you're just sitting in a chair that's moving a little bit. And also, it... Now, this is maybe just me personally. It messes with my inner ear and makes me a little bit uh, nauseous as an adult. As a kid, I kind of liked it, but, but the slide easily clears the swing. I mean, that's not even up for discussion. Okay, we go over here. We go over here. Okay, we... we yes, honey? What happened? You got a, a Mickey Mouse bowl? And you're eating grapes? You're putting grapes in your Mickey Mouse bowl. She's so real for that. I don't even need to ask her, by the way, because I'm a good dad. I take her to the playground. She'll spend a little bit of time. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 what's up? That's great. To eat, to eat some grapes? There's grapes inside it? Okay. I take her to the, uh, the playground. I mean, listen, we were at the Kennedy Space Center on, uh, on s Saturday. I don't know. Time is uh, a little bit messed up for me right now. There's a big slide in like the kids' play section. She went down that slide like, I don't know, 20 times. 
And I walked up the stairs with her every single time. She's, she's fully slide pilled. But then she, she was getting upset because like other kids were running up the stairs faster than her. So she would just sit down on the stairs and be like, I want to win. I want to beat other kids in the race. And then I'd be like, it's not a race. Everyone has to go up the stairs safely. And she's like, I won the bronze medal. I want to win the gold medal. And then I was like, okay, well, they race daddy. And she's like, no, I always beat daddy. I want to beat another kid. And I'm like, listen, kiddo. I control the outcome of this race, okay? If you wanted to go band for band on the fucking staircase, I've been sprinting two steps at a time since I was old enough to walk, okay? Now, do I occasionally slip? Yes. But you, you win or you lose based on my input, okay? I have a theory, by the way, and I say this as somebody who has been walking up a few floors to a buffet and then down and then up and then down. And th it's actually less energy intensive to run up the stairs. Walking up the stairs at a pedestrian's pace has more time under tension for your legs. Whereas obviously the impulse of running requires more energy, but you also spend more time in the air and the momentum does have, like you have inertia that helps you get up the stairs and you get there faster. I believe the overall physical load is smaller when you run up the stairs. I'm holding every button on my keyboard right now. If I had to guess, I would say hold, okay, regroup, re regroup, brother, regroup. <laughs> okay, okay. Ready? Yeah. Maybe maybe a swing. That's so dude. My my cat at uh, bedtime when I try to close my bedroom door. Hello. Hello. You ever see this one, Kate? Whoa, thank you. Oh, thank you. She's Coke Zero pilled. Yeah. I've never been happier to have a fridge full of Coke Zero. Okay, ready? Shoop. And then I shoop. Just keep it on the down low. Nobody here's supposed to know. <laughs> it's, it's making my skin crawl, dude. Okay, come down. Zoop. Reverse swing over here. Huge. Free solo. I had a Diet Coke the other day. Never again. Uh, I'm sorry to say that you're a dinosaur. Coke Zero is actually taking over. I will say, though, I had a great idea. The only corporation that I respect is the Coca-Cola Corporation. Everybody's allowed to be wrong from time to time. <laughs> sorry, but it do be tasting good. Kate saw a guy uh, on the Disney cruise. Americans love to experiment with their fountain drinks. You've got to admire them. They're a, a, a naturally curious people. They, um, th this person that she saw on the Disney cruise, 80% of the cup Diet Coke slid it over to the regular Coke, filled up the last 20% with regular Coke. She said, this guy is an innovator. And then I got to thinking, you know what they need? If they're going to keep making dog shit Coke freestyle machines that like barely work with antiquated touchscreen technology, there should be a Coke machine that is just a dial and the dial goes from like zero to 100 and you can choose what percentage of a real Coke you want. Like some, you could be like, dude, I don't want a Coke Zero. Like I've, I've been walking a lot today. Give me like a Coke 32. But then I realized, you know what the problem is? 
There's going to be some motherfucker at the machine who's going to be working at like the gas pump. And they're going to be like, they want Coke 27, but they're going to hit like 28 and then turn the dial and go like 26 and then 28 and then 26. Then they're going to get to 27, but they've been twisting it so much. They're like, uh, uh, I don't know, 28. They're like, oh, I had it. Well, I, was, I was on autopilot, 26. And you're going to be waiting there like, brother, it's an eighth of a gram of sugar difference, bro. You can't possibly tell the difference. I love it though. I, I can feel myself like how how fun it would be to it wouldn't be like a little dial too. Like it wouldn't be like an old stereo dial. It'd be like a fucking safe, like a, a bank vault dial. You'd go like like a it wouldn't be some digital no haptic feedback piece of crap, okay? And the most annoying guy you ever met would be like, bro, you can tell the difference. Coke 39 is the best Coke. Yeah, Coke 38 is pretty good. Coke 40 is a little rich for me, but Coke 39? No! <laughs> Coke 39 goes crazy. I see. I got gotcha. you. Hear me out, two dials. One is sugar, one is carbonation. I could get down with that. There are times where you just want like TV static, to be honest. Like there's some times I would take like, like sugar one, carbonation 100. That's the closest it gets to a cup of coffee. But most of the time, I mean, I think I could easily I could be like a Coke 10 guy and then like a carbonation like 70. I do, I want it to be carbonated enough that I cannot chug the can. Um, like I, I want one swallow to be as much as I could take without discomfort. We don't do that here, okay? Would you ever do sugar 100 carbonation zero? Are you, you're asking me if I'm a hummingbird and the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom says I don't have to answer that question. Sugar zero, carbonation zero. <laughs> That's just <laughs> probably the, the worst tasting water you'd ever experience. What am I doing over here? Is this a different area? What's going on with the water wheel, man? Never mind, we're chilling. We're chilling. I had something to say, but I forgot about it. What about a caffeine slider? Dude, a caffeine slider would go crazy too. If I could get a, a Coca-Cola with um, as much caffeine as like a grande Starbucks iced coffee, I would absolutely stop drinking coffee and just have a fucking charged lemonade Coke Zero every morning instead. It'd probably be worse for me, but I'm kind of embracing like uh, hedonism a little bit. I'm kind of uh, giving up on the vague idea of living better and instead accepting that my body uh, is a tool that my brain can use to experience positive sensations. And you gotta limit it a little bit of course, you, may, you might even have to limit it a lot because the tendency is to steer into the skid and approach oblivion. But you can always just, um, you know, have a Coke 10 instead of a Coke Zero and then exercise for an extra nine minutes. That's pleasurable in its own right. Watch it spin round to a beautiful oblivion. Exactly. Rendezvous, then I'm through with you. What happened? Brother, what are you doing? I'm just kind of swinging. <laughs> we go back.
you're two seconds into the nine minute speed run. Oh man. You know what was pissing me off on the Disney Cruise too? So they have a great um, kids club where you can drop off your child. They have cool activities. And uh, then you come back in a couple hours and pick them up. Usually you get a message that's like, hey, your daughter would like to be picked up. And then you say, okay, just one more caperina. And you go down. Um, but then they, ha they have open houses so that the parents, oh, he's dead. Uh, and other children that are not of the target age demographic of that particular club can go and check out the facilities like with their kid and see uh, what it's like. So I kept taking my daughter to the open house and they had Wii with Wii Sports hooked up and I was like, I'm gonna crush this shit. Show up at the open house, two 10 year olds played Wii baseball for like an hour and a half. I was just waiting for next. I'm not gonna walk over to the kids and say, hey, I got next. But like, come on, like have some manners, like who raised you? And also Wii Baseball is like the worst of all the Wii Sports games. Boxing is worse, okay, but they didn't have the nunchucks. You don't even get to field in Wii Baseball. All the fielding happens by itself. Listen, number one is bowling, full stop. Number two, me personally, I say golf because there's a little bit of skill to it. You might say tennis, but for me, tennis is a little gimmicky. It's the game you go like, hey, I'm swinging a racket. That's cool. There's less nuance to it. I'm more of a golf guy, but it's golf two, tennis three, or tennis two, golf three. That's for sure. Boxing where? Last for sure. If you're going to play baseball, don't play the baseball like against your friend in real baseball. Play the, the home run derby. You don't get to field anyway. Stop, stop pretending you're playing small ball in a game for like six-year-old kids. Go do the home run derby and see if you can crank out 10 dingers in a row. If you can do that and go pro, more power to you. Anyway, long story short, I said, okay, that's my mistake. I showed up too late to the open house. Of course, they're going to bogart the Wii. Show up one minute, 9.31 a.m. of the open house. Same two kids. This time they're playing Wii golf. Man, those kids don't even know. I would have laid waste. You know how many drunken hours? How many like insanely hammered muscle memory firmware exists in my brain from Wii Sports? I, got, I still got the technique wired in there. Also, there's like a, a teen lounge that had an open house. I thought it was, I'm, I'm, put me in the water. This is important. I took my kid there day one during open house. I wanted to see what, what they got for like the 13 to 17 year olds, okay? I walk in, they got a Guitar Hero console or a, like arcade cabinet, just like the, the last one. I'm like, I'm gonna blow these kids' minds. I, I start playing something on the guitar. I think it was Sabotage. They don't have the whole track list. It's the arcade version. Realize that the yellow fret is stuck down. That's a non-starter. I'm like, okay, no big deal. I go over to controller two, start trying to play. The strum bar is broken. It doesn't work, man. The shit doesn't work. Then kids came over to talk to the counselor because they had a Nintendo Switch set up. And they said, hey, can you put on Smash for us? And the counselor said, unfortunately, Smash is not rated E for everyone. So we can't put it on during open house because there's kids here. I could have been a hero to a new generation of American children. They kept, they kept popping my damn balloon before I could even get it going, man. Anyway, here we go. Smash is E10 though? Well, I don't know, I, I mean, my daughter was not 10. So I can understand they were trying to protect her from seeing Donkey Kong punch Kirby in the face. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I, I'm serious. Listen. 14-year-old kid says, let's put on Smash. I shouldn't have gone this way. That's a problem. That kid's probably going to rinse me. Nine-year-old kid says, let's put on Smash. He's leaving in tears.
hundred percent guaranteed. It, it's on site. Do you have a smash main? Yeah, random. Random, but then if I get someone who has a, a menu in game, re random. Egg played Smash? I don't want to brag. Uh, Ultimate's probably my worst Smash, and I still win Elite. Come on, come on. Grab it, bro. Grab the tire. Grab the tire. There you go. My forearm hurts. What's the soundtrack of Kirby's Dreamland then? You want to ask me anything about Smash 64 within reason? Uh, I'll tell you. Maps that you don't play? Planet Zebes? My ass is not playing Planet Zebes. You let them pick the map. You let them pick the items. They're like hammers and pokeballs only on Planet Zebes. My ass getting Tekken juggled by the damn radioactive lava over and over, but they don't have the audacity to kill me. Come on, man. Woo! Who is the best break the targets character? Me personally, I don't know the answer to that question because I had friends, so I didn't play much of the single player. My guess is that you could either do some serious work with Fox as a result of his reflector, or alternatively, maybe Link with the boomerang and the bomb, you could get some serious work done. That's my guess. Anyone got, is there an answer? <laughs> It is Link. Okay, there you go. Who is the hardest metal character to fight? <laughs> oh God. I'm assuming... It's been... Why are you asking me questions about the single player, bro? Who is the most annoying character to play against? Uh, that's a gimme. It's 100% Kirby and Pikachu. You get killed by a Captain Falcon, you don't even sweat it. You say, you know what? You went nuts on the table mode. You hit me with a knee. You hit me with a Falcon punch. You hit me with a spike off the edge, whatever. You get killed by a Pikachu. It's just all like back kicks in the air. You get on the edge. You get up. You get kicked. You don't get knocked out of the edge. They do a, a little jump off the edge, give you a little kick. It doesn't kill you. You barely make it back. He gives you another kick. Come on, man. What input didn't exist in 64 and started in Melee? That's a Melee question. Um, I don't have an answer. I'm going to say C-Stick, the Smash Stick. Because it didn't have a Smash Stick. Side B. That's true. That's true. That's pretty true. Air Dodge. There's a lot of stuff that didn't exist, honestly. These days, old heads know, man. Old heads knew what we had to deal with before wave dashing existed. You fucking kick the shit out of your friend in Smash. All of a sudden, he's like, oh, it's just because you're controller one. I'm controller two. Port priority owns you, little bro. Then you say, okay, let's switch controllers. You switch controllers, you beat his ass. He throws the controller on the ground, stomps upstairs. You're like, it's his night to cook dinner, bro. It's going to be awkward. It's not just awkward because he's mad, it's because he's going to have to apologize and be like, sorry, I got mad at a video game. And I'm going to be like, we've all been there, bro. Just relax. But stop putting disres disrespect on my name with this port priority nonsense. <laughs> Your roommate made you dinner? Yeah, a couple times. It made some... Uh, are you familiar with... Me Goring? He was Dutch. Woohoo! And uh, I guess uh, some Dutch cuisine is also influenced by and also influenced like Southeast Asian cuisine. 
I will say, though, it was pretty, like, he was like, I'm so excited to cook you guys dinner so you can taste this. And then my reaction when, I thought he was going to buy a bunch of, like, ingredients from the store, and instead he just opened up a package of spice mix and then poured it on top of some ground beef. <laughs> but still, it was pretty good, don't get me wrong. For college, it's pretty good. I'm not, I, I wouldn't turn it down now, honestly. Here we go. Look at that. Look at this. Is this the beginning? Yes, it is. I'm, I, this is the farthest I've made it. But look at how fast I got back here. It's beautiful. This shit is looking more majestic than Shen Yun. 10,000 years of culture. Go. Go. And go! He's not going. We're going down. We're going down. Did you know that Shen Yun is run by a cult? I don't want to be killed, okay? <laughs> All I'm going to say... They got a lot of people doing legwork out there, okay? Like, there's, is there really, like, a Shen Yun in every city? And then also, like, posters everywhere. And then people, like, leave Shen Yun flyers, like, in our mailbox. Maybe like once, once a month, which doesn't make sense to me because it's not like an all year type of thing. Like they, they're doing the leg work, bro. Check this out. Go fast. Cat mode. Okay. <laughs> stretch, stretch it. Stretch it. I don't know what to do. Press space to pull up. This is, I'm up, bro. I'm up. You need momentum. Okay. I, oh, I, yeah. No, no. I've seen people do this. Hey, Seek and Strike, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Watch this, okay? Something like this. Start here, go low, and then we're going to go like this. But good this time. Is that how you do it? If I was doing this in real life, how would I do it? <laughs> Can you not just reach? Bro, how tall are you? Oh! <laughs> 6'10? Ho! You know what's also great about having been in the wild for a week instead of online? I'm just going to say it. You guys are not as tall as you pretend to be. Whenever I've been on the internet for a long time, and then um, I go out in public, I always expect that I'm going to be like a little leprechaun out there, and I'm going to just be towered over by individuals. I'm literally... I mean, it's a Disney Cruise. you got a lot of older people, don't get me wrong, and a lot of small children. But I'm like right there in the median there's always like one dude who's like insanely tall and i he's like you know he's going like like we all get it brother you're tall congratulations but yeah you're not as tall in the real world as you say you are online i did see and again i'm not basing my entire worldview wow 
wow on on TikTok. But I did see a TikTok where they asked men their heights and then asked them if they would mind if they got measured for the video. And uh, listen, I'm just here to tell you if you're lying about your height, you got to pick your battles. Because there were dudes out here that were like, I'm six feet tall. And then they measured them and they were five, seven. And you're like, that's not going to fly, man. If you're 5'10", you might be able to get away with saying you're six feet. But if you're 5'7", like, people are going to know. They might not know you're 5'7", but they're going to know you're not six feet tall. It's that easy. I'm 6'2", I'm but I like to say I'm 5'9", to watch guys sweat. That's actually great tech. I wish I could do that. Imagine being 6'2 and telling everyone you're 5'10 when you meet them. So then, <laughs> so then when they're like, how tall are you? And the guy's shorter, he's got to be like, oh, man, I'm six foot. Go, well, really? You're shorter than this guy. And you really think this guy would lie to make himself seem shorter? Come on. I like that. That's like a victim full crime. Like there's no benefit to you except amusement. And... Uh, Really, if anything, both you and the other victim suffer. Imagine if they checked you, though. Imagine if the dude was like, there's no way you're 5'10", because I'm 5'10". And then you got, they measured you, and you got called out by being a fucking weirdo who's complaining or pretending that he's shorter than he actually is. They'd be like, why are you doing that, bro? That's weird. Then you replace the tape measure with a shorter one. Oh, so true. Or you, no, you know what you do if you're short? You just get a metric tape measure like we have in Canada. You'd be like, what the fuck, bro? I'm like 167 inches tall. <laughs> I'm like 16 feet tall, bro. Holy. Here you go. You go low. You go low to high. Okay, this is the third doorbell ring. It's 12.30 on a Monday. What's going on? It's, it's getting a little insane. Is it, is it Halloween? Up, up, right? Right, there's laughter. There's laughter, that's good. Dude, I don't want to say it's Shen Yun, because what if it is Shen Yun? It's 10,000 years of culture, Jerry. Start low. Go swing and go high. <laughs> Grab it. Grab it! Just reach up. Brother, I'm not that tall. I'm only 6'2". Maybe I'm, tr I'm trying to grab... Oh. Oh. Wait, well, hold hang on a second. Hang on. Maybe you're on to something. <laughs> I was holding three instead of E. Oh, no. You got on your daylight savings rant yet? No, but honestly, it's because we were traveling, so we just kind of ate the extra hour. Like, there was a time change while we were in the Caribbean as well. So I was, like, waking up at 6 a.m. Eastern time, which is, like, 2 a.m. Pacific time. My body's like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm like, don't worry about it. Here's eight strips of bacon and four hash browns and a coffee and two Coke Zeros. <laughs> I just I threw the kitchen sink at it and said, you know what? You figure it out. That's what you're good for. So yesterday, we woke up in Florida. I guess we lost an hour overnight. Or, yeah. But I, this is, as much as I hate daylight savings time, I, I hate the time change because it just messes with you for no reason. This is the, my preferred part of the, of the clock. I prefer the later sunsets, and I don't really care about the time for the sunrise.
Uh huh. Uh Right there. Okay. It's always better to gain an extra hour of sleep. Don't get me wrong. But you lose an hour of sleep once, and probably like, especially if you have kids, it kind of fucks up their circadian rhythm for a bit. But once you get through it, those long summer nights, brother, tell me more, tell me more. It's fucking depressing, bro. Go in to pick my kid up from daycare at 4.15 p.m. and it's dark outside. She's like, let's go to the playground. And I'm like, I'm not trying to get killed out here. That's called winter. Move south if it's that bad. You're fucking Alabama ass in the summertime. Hey, the sun's going down. It's 810. My Arctic ass in the summertime. Bro, it's 11 p.m. And it's not even fucking dark yet. This owns, man. Let's go on the seawall. You don't even understand the thrill of living far away from the equator. It's majestic, bro. You get the, the highest highs and the lowest lows. Ready? He's dead. Isn't Vancouver as north as Rome? Listen, I don't want to... That sounds wrong, but it also seems like the sort of thing that you would only type if you just looked it up and wanted to catch me. Vancouver is surprisingly north. Considering that the weather is so... Uh, good relative to the rest of Canada. Obviously, it's close to the U.S. border, but latitudinally, it's, it's fairly north. It's much more north than Rome. Look at that. What did I tell you? Yo, one of the food guessers while you were gone was Jappa Dog from Vancouver. Can you explain? Yes, Jappa Dog is a famous local. It's kind of like a chain. They have like one sit-down restaurant, I think, near the H Mart on Robson Street downtown. But then they got like a few food trucks. They're Japanese-influenced uh, hot dogs that really started to pop off apparently uh, around the Vancouver Olympics. And uh, they're really good, bro. It's, it's a little expensive and it's not going to change your life. But whenever I'm at like a festival that has food trucks and there's a Jappa dog truck there, I'm getting Jappa dog. Help me. No, it's not really like a Korean corn dog. It's like, uh, it's really just like a hot dog with Japanese ingredients on it. You know, you can get a little seaweed, a little Japanese mayonnaise. You can get okonomi, yaki style ingredients. You could get a, a, a hot dog that's just got a pork cutlet on it with the pork cutlet sauce. It's good though. And the fries go crazy. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hello. Wow, what is that? A what? Can you hold it up to the camera? A little closer. A little right, right here. Right. Chat. What's this? A paisa. A paisa. It is apparently it's a paisa. It's cute. It has an apple on his chef head. Oh, this is so cute. So cute. This is the best surprise. It's the best surprise? Oh. A lycanthrope. Mm, a porg.
Help me. <laughs> anyway, it's good. Okay, hear me out, guys. Rome is 40 degrees north, New York City is 41, and Vancouver is 49, so I was way off. You know what? We love, we stand someone who's not afraid to admit that they were, I'm not even going to say incorrect. I'm going to, I'm going to, because you pled guilty, I'm going to plead you down to mistaken. Ob certainly not wrong, which is a capital offense. It's hard to tell, too, because you got that big-ass ocean between us. I mean, Atlantic Andes are kind of annoying because they're always talking about, like, how big the Atlantic Ocean is. And, like, Pacific Andes know, like, it's not that big. <laughs> it's like you literally fly from New York City to London in, like, five and a half hours or something. That's crazy, bro. There's something under the paisa. It's a yellow thing. Oh, he has spots under him. That is so cute. Look at their face. Oh, it's so cute. It kind of looks like Tomo. Mm -hmm. Is this you? It looks like me, right? Yes. He's got the same back of the head. But can I tell you a secret? What? Daddy's back is hairier than that. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying to climb. It's really hard, though. Wow. I'm trying. I'm trying. The green rock, you can't really grab it. You want to see? This is what Ruka and Tomo are like when they want food. You ready? Yeah. Wait, I didn't do it right. Yeah. I still didn't do it right. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Thank you. Are you having lunch? Yep. You're done with lunch already? No. No. Ready for this? Ready for this? Is that still the same rock from 30 minutes ago? Dio Guiga, don't bait me. Isn't the S&P 500 in the same place it was uh, 30 days ago? Yeah, your ass probably, well, maybe you're still on paternity leave, but either way, your ass theoretically still goes to work every day. Sometimes it's about the effort, it's not about the result, okay? Yep. No work till August? He's embracing the European lifestyle and I love that for him. Once we master this, it's so over for you. I should have a kid. You should, but I, listen. After being uh, on a boat with other families that are on vacation, I'm here to tell you something. I think you should stop at one. Every family I saw myself included that had one kid, it's like you're getting the spiritual nourishment that comes from parenthood, but not the incredible amount of stress that comes from managing two kids at the same time. Because like, one kid, two parents, when you're parenting at the same time, it's great. When somebody needs a break, one person takes off, they do their own solo thing for a bit, and you're one-on-one. You're -on -one. 
It's not like, you, you know, it's tough to manage. You're not outnumbered. Some of the families here, two kids, they, they, they seem like they were doing great. Don't get me wrong. Once they get up to like, and I'm not insulting your way of life, don't get me wrong, but like three kids, four kids, I'm like literally your only job on the cruise is to like go eat whenever you want, except at dinner time you have to be there at like 545 and they were freaking the fuck out, bro. And I'm not blaming the parents. I mean, it's hard. Like the, the, the youth brain doesn't work in the way that the society is designed to work. <laughs> I can see it changing as they get older. But like every parent we talk to says it's different. My sister-in-law says two kids is easier than one. It's harder at the outset, but then when they get older, they do a good job of like raising and playing with each other. That makes sense to me. But then we have friends who have two kids, and I was like, is it easier or harder? And they said it's exponentially harder. Harder. And I was like, all right. Well, I don't know what to believe. It turns out that, you know, it's, it's probably different for every person. It's probably different for every kid, too. I will say, this is yucking others' yums, but I think that because it is people that you make fun of, chat, you're going to agree with me, which is where we have to examine our own biases. When I saw people my age on the Disney cruise that were there without kids, I was like, Brother, what are you doing here? You're really waiting in line for 45 minutes to take a picture with someone in a rat from Ratatouille costume? You're 35 years old with no kids and obviously some disposable income? Go get, do whatever you want, okay? But like, go get some culture or something. We're stuck here in a good way. I was very comfortable, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, like, the options have been like gated off to us for now as a result of the fact that we're traveling with a three and a half year old. We're making family memories. You guys could be, you could be taking a pill in Ibiza. Like, um, Mark Ronson? No, no, Mike, Mike, Mike Posner, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I got this one. Hold, hold, you can, you can try again, you can try again. Grab. Yep. Try again. I don't think we're there. I think we're there. It's crazy reading about how low Korea's birth rate is. I, well, Kate's been talking to me about it, too. I guess it's been in the news lately. But I'm like... I don't know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a systemic kind of guy. I'm not a great man of history kind of guy anymore. I'm a, I'm a systemic Andy. I think that if you want people to have kids, you should make it, you should give them some incentives to have kids. There's like no incentive to have children except the one that was like baked into our genetic code. Like now it's expensive, it sucks up your free time. Now as a parent, you know that it, your neurological structure changes when you have a kid and you're like, I don't really want to like, I can't imagine my life without it. But like the system that surrounds us is like, is not, I know how this sounds to people that don't have kids, but I'm serious. There, there's not that much scaffolding to help parents out. If people want, if they want us to have more kids, we should fucking make childcare easier make school easier and fucking, I don't know, buy my parents a house out here. <laughs> my ass on the airplane hearing the moms talking to their kids. Yeah, tomorrow you're going to go stay with grandma and grandpa. Yo, fuck you, man. Grandma and grandpa ass. Okay. Here we go. Right. 
So far, so good. We do need government-mandated grandma and grandpa time. The bushes. You're right. It's the only way. They're not going to give way on me, right? This isn't a, a Fadi-esque troll. Two hundred billion is peanuts. Deal, we go. What are you? Ta oh, you're talking about um, with respect to the U.S. government. Okay, that's probably t that's probably true. What's two hundred billion dollars between friends? Oh, to the South Korean government. I also feel like I'm genuinely like obviously I'm biased from the experience I had in South Korea. It seems like really. Uh, hard to be a kid and a young adult in South Korea. Like, you have a few years of being a kid, then you go to kindergarten and your parents put you into like 20 different academies and hagwons, and then middle school ramps up to the point that kids are like staying up 20 hours a day to study, to get into good schools for like sixth grade, which is absurd. Uh... And then you get into the, the middle school, the high school, you, you keep working, you go to university, you go to, uh, you get a good job where you also are, the culture is still that you work like, you know, 17, 18 hours a day. If you combine it with, you know, drinking with your boss and then sleeping in the alley outside of the place where you drank with your boss and then waking up and going to work the next morning, like, that seems like pure ass. Like, I'm not surprised. There's one reason people aren't having kids. They're too damn busy, man. We. But it says go down. Do I trust it? Do I trust it? Hello, honey. This is Paisa. I know it's Paisa. You told me about Paisa. You might fall down. Watch this. You ready for this? Oh, <laughs> Daddy's pretty strong, right? You ready for this? Wee! I know. I'm climbing down. It's like a dinosaur here. This, this, okay, careful, honey. Don't get scared, okay? This has a skull on it, so it might be dangerous over here. They might try to scare us. Oh, I fell. I fell in the water. Is this what daddy looks like when he swims? Is daddy a good swimmer? No? I think... Go, Daddy. Go, Daddy. <laughs> Daddy's a pretty good swimmer. He's okay. Let's go down. Don't hit me with Paisa. A I'm a bad guy? You know, while we were on vacation, you kept saying Daddy's evil. Here, honey, come around this way. Oh, you're gonna rock Paisa in the rocking chair? Yeah. Oh, okay. What did you have for lunch today? Did you have a peanut butter jelly sandwich? Uh, yes. And a cheese string. And, and, and grapes. She was so tired yesterday. No joke, we were eating at the airport chilies in the Calgary yeah. airport. Again, big ups to Calgary. You think I'm being snobby about the chilies? I'm actually just happy that there were things that were open. Regardless, kids' menu has a uh, grilled cheese sandwich on it. You got to remember, this is we woke up at like 7 a.m. Florida time, and then um, 
When, when did the mom phase start? We woke up at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. Florida time. It was like 2 a.m. Florida time at the time this dinner happened. Don't, don't bring your chair upstairs. I like it down here so you come and hang out with daddy while I'm working. You don't sit on my trash can. That's for garbage. Look at that. Don't, don't take it upstairs, honey. No, no, no. Don't take it up because it's too heavy. If you drop it, it's going to make like such a loud noise. It might even break. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let me fall in the water. I'll, I'll carry your rocking chair up so that you can sit on it upstairs. You gotta move, though. It's right there. I'll, I'll take it up, don't worry. You're welcome. Here you go, come with me. Okay, so she was like insanely tired yesterday, obviously, understandably. When we were at the Chili's, I said, honey, do you want a grilled cheese? She said, oh man, oh man, no, I don't like grilled cheese. And I said, what do you mean you don't like grilled cheese? You eat like three grilled cheese a week and you like it. She says, no. That like hit me a little bit. I said, what is it? She says, I don't like grilled cheese. I like grilled cheese sandwich. And I was like, oh, sorry, sorry. I forgot grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> Just orange, my mistake. Then I... When I ordered, I said, my daughter will have the grilled cheese. And then she like whispered in my ear. She's like, grilled cheese sandwich. I said, she'll have the grilled cheese sandwich. And she was like, he got me. Let's go. Dipped in Mama Liz's Reaper oil. Kid thought she was getting like a halloumi or something like that. Don't flatter yourself. It's Calgary's airport chilies. Huge. I don't have anything else to say. YYC, honestly, not that bad. Honestly, I was becoming a caricature of myself. I, I hate to admit it, Vancouver and Calgary have a, a bit of a rivalry. I say rivalry because I consider it to be good-natured ribbing. I make fun of them for being uh, yokels, and they make fun of us for uh, housing being insanely expensive. And I say, thank you, sir, because <laughs> I have one. You're basically complimenting me at this point. So basically, we always win when I construct the bit. Um, but when I was in the airport, I was like, brother, how is Vancouver winning best airport in Canada year after year? Because YYC kind of seemed, it was cooking it a little bit. It was bigger. It seemed like, well, I mean, I only flew out like, or flew in once, but had like lots of open restaurants, had a cool Pentaveret style tram that took you from terminal to terminal. Sorry, I didn't mean YY. No, YVR is the one that, it's Vancouver. That wins airport of the year in Canada every year. And I've always been like base, base, base because it, it clears fucking <laughs> Toronto. Toronto's bad. The great thing about Toronto, you're like, thank God it's not Montreal. 
tram in an airport equals poorly constructed airport. Okay, Squeaks, listen, we already have one pedantic economics guy here, okay? It's me. And then the chatter that fulfills that role is D.L. Guiga. I think a tram in an airport can be... Sometimes I think it's necessary. Do you ever realize, like, how amazing an airport is? I don't know if I can... I, I have to just hold it here for a second. The inside of an airport is so mysterious to me. You go to the ticketing agent. You... Boop, Scan your boarding pass. You give them your suitcase. They put it on a conveyor belt. The conveyor belt gets sucked up into the back. You then go through security, get on your airplane, fly, land, and then you see a conveyor belt coming out from the guts of the airport that brings your bag back to you. What is... I mean, I understand that it's not conveyor belts like all the way. Like they put it on the plane. But at the same time, I'm like, what? This must be a fucking mess back there, bro. And you're not allowed to see it at all. You're not allowed to go back. I was kind of pleased with YYC. I was not pleased with the Orlando airport. There's still, something's not right there, okay? Now listen, it took us an hour. We landed at 12.40 a.m. last week. It took us an hour for our bags to come out on the conveyor belt in Orlando. Oh, that's the airplane. The, the, the airline handles that, not the airport. Oh, really? Because the same airline seems to be getting your luggage out in five to ten minutes when you're at any other airport in the world. The Orlando airport, apparently not. It's, I know it's the back rooms back there. It's the airport. It's hell on earth. It's dog doo-doo. It's Florida. <laughs> YWG's hilariously bad. Bro, listen, I know you're probably not, never going to go here, but try flying into YGK sometimes. What's YGK? Uh, Kingston, Ontario, bro, population 120,000. You know how they say show up three hours before your flight or two hours if it's domestic? You could literally show up probably like 30 seconds before your flight. I think it's an airport where you could actually tell them to just hold... The, you could call and be like, I'm going to be two minutes late. Can you just hold the plane? And they'd be like, sure, no problem. Like the same person does the ticketing and then does the security and then is at the gate scanning your boarding pass and it all took place within like five minutes. And you're like, what are you... You really need to scan this again? Like, I literally just got it from you, like, <laughs> less than 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I know my seat. It's four. You don't... Yeah. Hey, four. Oh, that's on the right side of the airplane. Yeah, I know. It's the only side with seats on it, bro. Let me guess. It's uh, just behind number three and in front of number five. Oh, no, no, my bad. There is no number five. That's the lavatory. Hang on. You got it. You got it. You got it. Oh, good. Oh, fantastic. Here we go. Here we go. Bush me. 290 electoral college votes in 2004 be like Bush me. Or... <clears throat> 38 divided by 2. 265 electoral college voters in 2000 be like, Bush me. Actually, um, seven Supreme Court justices in 2000 be like, Bush. Was seven, you have seven or, or nine there? You got nine? There's no way you got eight, right? Because who wins in a tie? Nine. Holy. It's so makeable. Can I say something beer snobby? And we, I think we've done this exact bit before, but I want to reiterate it again. We as a society need... <clears throat> can I say something about beer? And you can plus to me or minus to me. I don't care. We as a consumer base need to... Band together and kill Michelob Ultra. It can't be allowed to propagate. 
bad beer, tends to be expensive, uh, marketed as a low-calorie beer, but has the same amount of calories as Miller Lite, which actually has some flavor. We need to kill Michelob Ultra. It has no reason to exist. It occupies a, a niche that should have no consumers. Do not drink it. Don't let the marketing get to you. I know they got skinny people with six packs drinking Michelob Ultras in the ads. Drink a Miller Lite. There's, there's a respectable blue collar sensibility to it. Anyway, that's all I got. Whee. I'm not supposed to be here. Squeaks, where do I go? Where do I go from here? I guess down. Do Miller Lights taste better? Um, Michelob Ultra, I don't even mean this to, like, it, it, it doesn't say anything about your personality, you know? It's just a beverage. But it, as someone who drinks beer, it tastes like nothing. And I don't even mean in like a, a, a Coors Light kind of like, you know, it's watery. I mean, like, it tastes like, like a glass of water that you squeeze like a chemical into or something like that. Hang on, this way. Thank you. That's his biggest strength? Well, then just drink a Coors Light, bro. I know you're like, I can't drink a Coors Light. I have a bachelor's degree in computer science. I promise you, you can. We can find the common ground here. Not the Michelob Ultra. No, I'm just begging you, not the Michelob Ultra, okay? Not the, not the tech CEO, ultra marathoner, 100 calorie beer. Come down here with the common man. You can get something that, that does the same thing for you, but doesn't carry the same kind of weight. I can't make it, man. I can't make it. I can make it. I can. Okay, I'm going to go higher because I understand how gravity works. Here we go. Not even close. Not even in the ballpark. <laughs> Not even in the vicinity. What's the sane amount of Oreos to eat in one sitting? I honestly think... Um, and again, we're, we're embracing gluttony a little bit. I'm in my gluttony era. But I do want to say, yeah. cookies are a food where you have to grab however many you think is sane to eat and then take them out of the package and bring them to your couch. Do not bring the whole bag slash box of cookies to the couch. You will eat too many. You might be able to self-moderate with some other snacks, but like you need, it's, it's like, you know, Ernest Hemingway said, write drunk, edit sober. You should pick your snack and the quantity of it, if it's a cookie, before the dopamine hits your brain. Because when the dopamine hits your brain, your, your decision-making is going to be clouded. Your judgment is going to be compromised by the, the neurotransmitter. Now chips, you get a bag, you pour the bag into a bowl, you finish the bowl, you go back to the cabinet, you fill the bowl up again. Then you go back to the cabinet and you're like, I just want a couple more chips. When you pick up the bag, you realize it's more than halfway done. You're like, well, I'm not gonna save 38% of a potato chip bag for tomorrow. So then you just eat until you feel sick and then the next day you have like one handful of chip, chips and then you're like, oh, it took me two days to eat the bag. I understand that logic. Do not cite the old words to me, which I was there when they were written. Hold. 
You like the Canucks trade? I have, I'm, I'm out of the loop. I'm out of the loop. What happens? I was happy to see we were washed when I left and we were goaded when I came back. I appreciated that. There, were, there was none. Oh, okay. <laughs> they traded for Joe Biden. Let's go. They traded the other Elias Pedersen. No, they didn't. You're trying to bait me. Demko's out two to four weeks. I thought he just had gastroenteritis. He wasn't just pooping. Go, go, go. NFL trades popping off. Yeah, I gotta like catch up on the real world again. I've been in it like a cruise ship and then the places you go when you're off the cruise ship might be the least real parts of planet Earth. Maybe Las Vegas is like a little... No, honestly, because you see realness in Vegas. It's, you, you see the underside of the rock where the bugs are crawling. There's something... I, I hate it, but I, re, I respect it at least. That I'm like, this is people living their, their real life at their most like id-driven level. But like the the cruise is fake, which is cool because it's a lot of fun. But okay, what the what the fuck do you do here, man? What the fuck do you do? What do you do? Hold with both hands and swing more. Okay, you don't want your, your tibias crossed here. Or your, your ulnar, what is this called? Your radius? Yeah, okay, listen, we fell, but I think that's absolutely gonna work. You live, you learn. Radius is on the thumb side. Okay, know it all. Listen, I'm, that, that was not called for. I don't know human anatomy that well. The bones at least, the nerves. I don't really know the, the sound they make. Or I, oh, I got it wrong. I don't know what it's called. I just know the sound it makes when it takes a man's life. Nick Nolte, Tropic Thunder. I made this. You got to go from the barrel. Better or worse than getting over it? Here's my new thing. This is my resolution that'll last for about two streams. Um, we're done pitting two bad bitches against each other. Is Balatro better than Slay the Spire? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. You can have both. I reject the premise of the question. You can have both. Balatro or Slay the Spire? I reject the question. I don't have to choose. We can have both. You have to choose. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Balatro or Slay the Spire? I reject the premise of the question. Elden Ring or Power World? Elden Ring. I, I do not reject the premise of the question. <laughs> Limmy or NL? Limmy. Next question. I don't reject the premise of the question. I do think, like, this was my tweet in the, in the Uber on the way to the airport. I think a, a tier list of months would go crazy. I also realize that, like, half of the people replying to that tweet are literally, like, 14 years old. Why does so many people go, like, yeah, like, March is pretty good, but the best month is, like, month that has my birthday in it. Like, 
I, I guess, like, live your life. I didn't realize I was the only honest individual. As a Canadian, my birthday is in November, and I'm content saying November is an unremarkable month. Colder than October in a bad way. No holiday except for American Thanksgiving and Remembrance Day. And then it's got Halloween just before it, so you're coming off of a high and going down to nothing. And then it's got the Christmas holidays right after it. So it's just kind of like this little dopamine valley where I'm like, outside of my birthday, November, it ain't got much. The worst month, I was happy to see there was basically a consensus. The worst month is February and January is close behind. Like January at least has New Year's. February has nothing, man. February is just like, it's like the, the surplus month where we're like, how many days do we need to round out the year? It's cold as fuck. People are like really getting excited for Groundhog Day. Come on. <laughs> it's ridiculous. March, the, March, you compare it to May. If we went May to March, we would be like, March sucks ass. But the fact that we're going February to March makes March seem amazing. Sun's so bright right now. Yeah, it's raining, but like the weather's pretty nice. It always feels better to ascend out of winter than to descend into it. Like if it's 10 degrees Celsius in March, you're saying, brother, maybe it's shorts weather. Maybe it's shorts and, and t-shirt weather today. When it's 10 degrees Celsius in October, you're like, I needed my winter coat. Like this, it's, there's a very different feeling depending on the way, that you, the direction that you enter the temperature. <laughs> Top tier months. I, I mean, I, I feel like most people are going to be on the same page. The best month of the year, if, if you're being honest, the best month of the year... I only take you seriously if you say May, June, or July. May, beautiful scenery, beautiful weather, certainly not too hot. June, same thing, but then sometimes you also get uh, perhaps a vacation or perhaps school is not in session anymore. Even though, you know, I, I've been conditioned to think of like the end of June, at least in Canada, as like uh, something to be excited about just because of the fact that, you know, there was like 20 years of going to school where that was when we finally got summer vacation. July, July for me feels like peak holiday season. August also great, but sometimes it can be a little too hot. Depends on where you live. It's very weather dependent. But I, I think like the summer months in the northern hemisphere go crazy. Spring and fall are, are in competition next. What's crazy, though, is that, like, it's kind of like Shohei Otani and, and Mike Trout on the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. Like, the winter months suck ass, but December is the only month that comes close to being an MVP contender. Depending on the industry and the role in which you work in, you might get two weeks off. You see your family, you give presents, you get presents, you eat yummy food, you cuddle up by the fireplace, everything's festive, etc., etc. November, definitely not it. January, not it. February, probably the worst month. And then spring and fall, I think this, you know, it's dealer's choice. September's kind of nice. Like those first few days of it being a little chilly are nice until you remember that you're like this is the best weather we're gonna have until like five months from now <laughs> we make these i love the cold guy who lives in san diego Listen, though, librarian, I'll level with you. When I was in um, San Diego last October or last November, I guess, it was cold as fuck. Like West Coast cold. 
Like I was like, I was wearing a, a sweatshirt and I was like, I should have brought a jacket. Like you're California, bro. <laughs> Be hot. Wait, 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 I remember, I remember. I remember. Come here. Why are you always talking to a librarian and not regular chatters? Ask better questions. Make better comments. God, <laughs> hurtful. I don't know. Why am I always fucking calling my parents instead of just like a random person? Because I have uh, respect for them. We have... Uh, uh, acquaintanceship or a relationship that where communication, you know, comes easily. Of course. And now I have size 32 feet. Chat, could this possibly be real? Is that like Guinness, Guinness records worthy? Like, that's, that's huge. Oh, size 32 Europe? What is size 32 Europe, bro? Is, isn't European shoe sizes are just centimeters? Me trying to maintain my angry uh, voice while realizing that's like a way saner way to do it. <laughs> I'm like, size 45, I don't know what the, oh, centimeters? Yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Instead, I gotta go, in, in North America, every shoe is a different size. People are like, what shoe are you? And I'm like, I wear anywhere between an 11 and a half to a 14, depending on which motherfucker made it. Hang on, it's so makeable. Can I tell you something, by the way? Maybe this will save you. We've saved people a lot. One thing that, that we've saved people with, oh, I'm about to get scared, aren't I? Was telling them that um, if you get frequent sores in your mouth, check and see if your toothpaste has an ingredient called SLS. It's like sodium lauryl sulfate or something like that. It's commonly used in tooth whitening toothpaste. A certain per That's fine. A certain percentage of the population, uh, their mouth gets very irritated by it and it leads to very painful sores in the mouth. Someone in chat saved me when I was talking about it. Um, and now I like to pass on that information as much as possible. Now, here's another piece of advice I'm going to give you. I hated going skiing because every time I went skiing, uh, I have like a pretty big foot, I'll admit. Not, and I'm not bragging, it's actually like part of the annoyance here. Uh, I would get ski boots and after like an hour of skiing, it would feel like my toes were so uh, in pain that they were going to fall off. And then some people would say, that's normal. And some people would say, no, you actually need to go a size up in your boot. And I said, that makes sense. My shoes probably are hurting my toes because they're too small. Went up a size, same problem. Went up a size, same problem. Went up a size, same problem. And now I'm up there like, I'm, they're really like, you need a size 13 and a half ski boot? Like you're fucking 5'10", bro. Why are you lying here? It's weird. We have friends who... Uh, one of them is a, a hobbyist skier. And I said, yeah, I used to like go skiing now and then, but it hurt my feet so bad that I just decided like I'd take up snowboarding instead because the boots are softer. And then she's like, oh yeah, that happens all the time. It means your boots are too big. That's some information that maybe would have been useful to the 19 year old Australian kid who's given everybody their ski boots. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Every time I have ski boots, they hurt. And they're like, oh, it sounds rough, mate. You read that's like oh, the one tip you should know, man. It turns out you're, if your feet are going numb and hurting a lot, you need to get smaller boots so that your feet don't 
move around and bump into the toe and constantly like, you know, cause pain there. <sighs> Little, did it work? Well, I don't know. I started learning how to snowboard in January of 2020 and then the rest is history. <laughs> Why, what happened? Yeah. Well, like, you know, I snowboarded a few times and I was, I wouldn't say I was like learning how to do it very well, but I was starting to make a little bit of progress. And then we were like, you know, next season, maybe I'll take it more seriously. And then COVID happened and kicked off for like two years. In that period, we also had a child. I'm like, I wouldn't say I'm more nervous than the average person, but like, I'm not one of those people who's going to take, like, our daughter's three and a half now. She's a little older, but I'm not taking my one or two-year-old to the fucking ski hill. It's insane to me that you're allowed to go to the ski hill, and it's just kind of like buyer beware. Like, you don't have to pass a test or, or anything. Skiing is way more fucking dangerous. It, at least it feels more dangerous than driving, bro. And you got to go through some serious red tape to learn how to drive, which, by the way... I'm four. But like you literally just press the pedal to go and you press the pedal to stop. And like, that's it. On skis, you're like pizza and french fry. But you like the pizza doesn't work all the time. Sometimes you really got to dig your feet into the crust. And then you're like a... You're skiing, like, through trees, basically. Like, even the, the tracks that are, like, well-maintained, you're, like, one sneeze away from going over the edge and, like, being face down in a, in a snow pile or something like that or smashing your head on a tree trunk. That was huge. I could do... This is Mission Impossible, too. I could do this in real life. Helmets exist? Oh, well, I guess nobody's ever been injured or killed skiing then. You know, two can play that game. Helmets exist, motherfucker. <laughs> Discourse, Andy. You in debate club in the ninth grade? Helmets exist. A plus. Nobody's ever tried that technique before. Okay, well, we'll we go again. Shouldn't we all wear helmets when driving? I don't know. It's one of those things where I'm like, I don't think it could help. <laughs> that, yeah, you're right. That's what the airbag is for. Oh. It's crazy the airbag comes out in time, man. Skiing is actually not that dangerous. Well, here's the thing. I, I agree with what you're saying. You know, probably tens of millions of people do it every year and don't get injured. But at the same time, it kind of is that dangerous on the scope of, like, comparing it to other activities that people tend to do. Like, you're, when you're skiing... At any given point, you're like one leg cramp away from possibly being in a dangerous situation. I was feeling like that when I was swimming, too. I did a lot of swimming while we were on vacation. I can swim. The, when you're a kid, you like, I don't know, you're just buoyant. And also, like, in better cardiovascular shape, and you weigh a lot less. As an adult, there were some times where I was like, <laughs> like, man, I'm getting kind of winded out here. And then you look around and you're like, uh, well, I guess it's like your body sends you a, a quick little lightning bolt that's like, are you going to die today? And you're like, I'm going to try not to. And then it's like, okay, here's some, here's some adrenaline. And then you're like, 
you get you know your wife and your daughter are chilling on the beach you get back and you're like <laughs> you're hiccuping hey how was it out there it was good it was good i had a good time so relaxing so relaxing i'm very comfortable in the water But it's more like I'm not even necessarily suggesting that they're dangerous. But I think that like it's insane to me. Well, I think a I think they are dangerous, and I think some people are being disingenuous. But I also think the fact that they don't make you take the necessary precautions to prove that you know how to ski before you get on the mountain is fucking insane. Now I don't know how they would implement it. I'm merely being an observing problems, Andy, not an offering solutions, Andy. But I I learned to ski on a field trip when I was like ten. When you're a kid, you just fall down, get back up again. You're never going to keep me down. Kate was like, before you, it'd been 15 years since I went skiing. She was like, do you want a lesson? I was like, no, I know how to ski. You go up the fucking gondola, start skiing. I'm like, I don't know how, to, how the, the fuck to ski. <laughs> and the trail is like wide. And some of the trails are really, really wide. But even then, you're like, you got to rely on people to take like a consistent... Uh, path, like a predictable path because no disrespect really good skiers you guys are annoying as fuck I'm sure some of you are like very professional and you're like I'm going to give newcomers like a wide berth but some of you are like shithouse drunk or on mushrooms and are just zooming down the mountain at like Mach 500 coming like a centimeter away from everybody else on the ski hill is very intimidating as somebody that's, that's trying to learn the damn ropes and here's the thing. I wish I wasn't there either. <laughs> I, I wish there was like a more self-contained environment where they were like, you got to Gran Turismo and get the C-Class license before we like, you should, you should have to like scan a QR code that they give you when you've proven proficiency and then the chairlift opens up to you. The fact that they let you make the mistake of going up the mountain is crazy. You need a license to ski? Well, I'm just saying, you know, like for the safety of everybody, it would probably help. If you, like, there should be, here's what I'm thinking, okay? There's a proficiency ski hill. When you ski down it, the instructor, there's like a guard at the bottom that watches the whole time. If you make it to the bottom and you appear to be comfortable, they give you the password. They go like, Stroopwafel. Then you go to the ski chair and you got to say the password in order to, for the chair to open up. Otherwise, they put you on the lift that goes to the proficiency uh, hill. And, on, and you can do the proficiency hill as many times as you want. Of course. Also, I thought I had something else to say, but maybe I don't. <laughs> Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. Then people die on the proficiency hill? Skill difference. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. The other thing is, like, there's, like, activities where if you get in, like, over your head, you just back the fuck out, right? You're like, I'm not built for this shit. I'm out. If your ass is like, I'm going to run a marathon, and then you get a mile into the run, and you're like, I don't know how to run, you just walk off to the side and like disappear into the crowd like Kaiser Soze. If you go up the gondola, like, and you ski a little bit down, there's only one fucking direction you can go, dude. Your ass is not going to climb back up the hill to get on the gondola and ride it down. You got to ski down to either the bottom of the hill or the next gondola station. Like, you, you got to go, man. I've walked before and it's miserable. My fingernails hurt just from watching that. I, I mean, I, I don't know if I've walked down a ski hill, but I've definitely like gone up to the top of Whistler 
and then skied like two legs of the 17 legs down and been like, brother, fuck this. And then just gone and rode the gondola down to the bottom instead. I mean, I like the sensation of skiing. It's just kind of like, sometimes it's just too intense. Like you give me the choice. So I'd rather like, you know, be in the chalet eating a pulled pork sandwich or like possible, like thinking that I'm going to get a concussion every 10 minutes when I'm out on the mountain my toes feeling like they're going to fall off. I'm like, just give me the pulled pork sandwich, bro. Snowboarding kind of fun, though. I kind of like snowboarding. I'll stay on the bunny hill all day. But the other thing is, risk-focused uh, uh, Andes don't understand the thrill that comes from uh, meditation. Even as a kid, I was like this. Learn how to ski on the bunny hill. Master skiing on the bunny hill. People are like, why don't you go to the blue circle? Why don't you go to the green circle? Well, I, don't, I don't know the shapes, right? I say, brother, I just achieved mastery on the bunny hill. I'm, I, I'm enjoying the serenity of mastery. I know every nook and cranny on this bunny hill. I know the parts that are iced over because they, that's where all the lessons took place. I know the parts where the sun is hitting and it has melted the powder a little bit. You get a little extra speed on that. This is my home. Like it's... Uh, the, the otter and the beaver are my friends, you know? And we are all connected to another in a loop and in a cycle that never ends. And then they're like, no, why don't you, why don't you start from square fucking one on a hill you've never seen before? Brother, this is, my, this is my garden. Are you crazy? The skier and the snowboarder arrive from their lift with a sense of purpose. You can take it too far, though. I definitely, uh, I'm the kind of guy who will, like, be scared of a roller coaster and then, like, ride a roller coaster and be like, that was sick. I'm just going to ride this one over and over. But I'm like, I think that's fucking kind of sick, bro. <laughs> Something cool about that, in my opinion. <laughs> you know what to expect. I think you got to ride a roller. If you're scared, you got to ride a roller coaster twice, bro. The first time is just to get over the fear. And the second time is to really appreciate the flavor. I think, in fact, I think you're going to ride it twice. So, oh, motherfucker. <laughs> hey, Schnitzel Slap, thanks for the gifted subscriptions. Thank you. Thank you. Are they making um, insane roller coasters that almost kill people still? Or is that like a 90s, 2000s thing? No, only airplanes. Bro, come on. The Boeing executives are in my chat, okay? There was just a couple of instances where the door fell off mid-flight or the, <laughs> the landing gear fell off when they landed or whatever. The window came off on one of them. I know this is like a little Monka S, okay? But the videos of the airplanes where either someone opens the emergency exit door or the door or the window falls off, there's something about it that's so fucking funny to me. Like the people in the seats, like they can't do anything, but they're not doing anything. And that, I think that's where the humor lies. Because they're like in an airplane and the wind is going, this is like minus 50 degrees Celsius wind whipping at like 500 kilometers an hour. And they're just sitting in the seats like. <laughs> and I know you're going to say like, what do you want them to do? And that's what they can't do anything. But like, 
you're like, what would you do in that situation? I'm like, I would do the same thing, but I, I'd like to think that when I landed, I would be like, how about that? That was something, huh? There's something about it, man. I don't know how to describe it, but it's like, it's just something you don't see. Oh my God. It's something you don't see every day. Like the, the Korean flight where the dude opened the emergency exit and there's just the two dudes holding onto the armrest while like their hair whips around them at Mach 17 and they keep looking at each other like, what are you, what are you even thinking? You're like, what are we doing here, man? <laughs> you can't do anything though. Like what are, you, what are you supposed to do? Do you think the pilot's not landing? He's landed as fast as he can. It's just, there's some inherent like, absurdity to it that's very funny to me. to me also why the fuck are so many people opening the doors in mid-flight <laughs> stop it bro you know what i'm realizing is i was always told or operated under the assumption that the because of the pressurization in the cabin you physically cannot open it i'm realizing that that's just something the flight attendants told people so that they never tried because it turns out like pretty average dudes are just ripping that shit open no matter like it it can't be that hard like it wasn't brian shaw He's got something to live for, right? Like, it's just a guy who got on the airplane. Help me. What kind of guy are you? Well, I'd like to think at a low enough altitude, I could crank that thing open. I wouldn't, because, like, I mean, A, I don't want to, and B, I don't think that's fair to the other 200 people that are just, like, trying to get home or go on vacation or something. Like, let me, I, I'm no longer afraid of flying. Um, I used to be, and then, much like the roller coasters, I did it enough where now I'm, like, it's fun. Or at least there's things to enjoy about it. But like if the worst part of my latent airplane anxiety, I'll actually say something in the airplane to myself like this. It's like, if I'm going to die in a plane crash, please God, let it either be on takeoff or Vancouver or takeoff or landing in Vancouver. Let me at least die like at home. Can you imagine if like I would be pissed if I died on like the first leg of a trip that had like two layovers. You're like, my ass really was trying to get from Orlando to Vancouver and I died in a plane crash in Minneapolis. That's fucked up. That's not, that's not where I started or where I was going. That's why they should only have direct flights, bro. I didn't really think about this too much, but. You're like, my ass didn't even want to be in YYC, and then all of a sudden, it's so, oh, I was decapitated in an overhead luggage bin snafu while taxiing at Calgary International Airport. No, thank you, bro. Let me, let me experience a rapid depressurization of the cabin on approach to YVR or something like that. I was not, I, I, I didn't use my head on that one. Apparently the guy who opened the door on the Korean air flight said he couldn't breathe and he wanted to get off the airplane faster. No joke. I'm not saying you have to hand it to him, but they should just open the emergency exit doors during deplaning. Get everybody out of here a little bit faster. Help me. 
Help me. That's not an emergency, though. Well, yeah. if, if it's not an emergency, it's just a door. But I think. Can I? I got a bone to pick, man. Why do we have so many doors in society that say emergency door, alarm will sound? And then when you open it, no fucking alarm sounds, bro. Even the doors are lying to us now. Like, I need to leave. Now I got to walk down a staircase and out like 17 different foyers just to get to a door that doesn't say the alarm is going to go off. They're silent alarms? Okay, then, like I give a fuck. Let your silent alarm go off. What are they going to do? Arrest me for using the wrong door to get out of the Kennedy Space Center? I don't know how the law works in America. Hello, Chibli, by the way. Hello. Are you enjoying your daylight savings time? <laughs> Neither do the police. Oh, man, you got me. Have you actually opened those doors, though? Yeah, well, here's my experience. In college, I started opening those doors when appropriate, right? I would say one in eight actually have an alarm attached to them. And honestly, it's a, it's a boy who cried wolf situation. Sucks for anybody who had their um, serenity ruined by that alarm going off. You should tell the fucking door manufacturers to stop crying wolf. If eight out of eight of them had an alarm that actually sounded, my ass would not be opening that door. When there's a, an 86% chance that no alarm's gonna go off, you show me the incentives, I'll show you the outcomes, brother. Hey, 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 hey. What's the upside? Leaving through the door that's right in front of me instead of having to walk back through the gift shop. Celebrating the five-year anniversary of you asking me this question. Whee! Okay, nuts on the table. If they made a 24-hour Costco, you think that bitch is still going to be busy at 2 a.m.? Guaranteed. Yes, because I'd be there. Dude, that's what people aren't ready for this. I was kind of hoping, like, I don't really care if the Wendy's Corporation lives or dies, but I kind of wanted to see surge pricing happen at Wendy's just to see what effect it would have on the restaurant. Because it's one of those things you come up with when you're, like, high as fuck. And you're like, if nobody's buying filet of fishes, then shouldn't the filet of fish be cheaper? I feel like you would see people that are like, you know, they know that the surge pricing kicks in at like noon. So they fucking go at, you see a lineup of people waiting in the parking lot at like 2.59 p.m. when the lunch rush is over. I'm with you. I know it would only work one way. And it, you would be like, you'd anchor on paying lunchtime prices for a Baconator. And then like if you were ever there at like, 2.30, you'd be like, yo, the Baconator is the same price it used to be. I'm saving so much money. But in a perfect world, could be kind of interesting at least. Now, do we live in a perfect world? I don't know. Did you know Costco says it opens at 9? I always go at 8.30. They're open. I leave at 9. No lines. They hated him because he spoke the truth. Is that true? I mean, I'm not in a position to be going to Costco at 8.30 a.m., but that seems like a, like a life pro tip for sure. <laughs> Wait, do, do they make you pay for the food, or do you just take the stuff out through the front door? So close, so close. I do have to say something about Costco, okay? 
I've come to respect the receipt checker because even if I don't think that they're really serving much of a utility, they're serving a utility to the person employed as the receipt checker. And I think that's cool, you know? Old dude takes a look at your receipt, marks it with a sharpie, clocks in eight hours, gets his benefits. That's fantastic. That being said, we need to decide, in my opinion, if it's uh, security or security theater. Because some of them pour through the fucking cart line by line to make sure that it's all there. They'll ask you things like, you know, they'll see like a kid's storybook and be like, did you bring that from home? And I'm like, yeah, bro, you don't sell fucking, oh, the places will go here. You got like a 12 pack of Dr. Seuss books. It's not the same shit, okay? They probably do actually, but I had to pick something. But then some people just look at it and just go, zip. Also, I'm <laughs> sorry for the, the airline work again, but we got to figure out what we're doing with the shoes, brother. We taking them on or taking them off? Are we keeping them on? What's going on? I never know. And they, they just love to, to tear you down, right? If you take your shoes off, they go, sir, you didn't need to take your shoes off. You're in TSA pre-check. If you keep your shoes on, they're like, sir, we told you 20 times to take your shoes off. Yeah. I'm like, no, you fucking didn't, bro. You've seen 20 other bald guys come through here. Also, can I tell I, I, I've mentioned many times before how I, I rolled a nat one on my charisma on this vacation. On the flight from Calgary to Vancouver, you know, it's late. Everybody's tired, including the staff. We've been ascending for six, seven minutes, right? It's a little rocky, but my bladder is going to explode. I look up, no seatbelt sign. Nobody else is up. I say, fuck it, nuts on the table. I'm going piss. I walk back to the lavatory. I see that the flight attendant is still strapped into the damn jump street like the Dark Knight Rises. He gives me one look and says, sir, you have to sit down. He like, like I'm an idiot. He was like, sir, you have to sit down when the seatbelt sign is on. I look at him. I looked at their display. There's no seatbelt sign. And I just shrugged my shoulders and went back to my seat. And then that same dude was doing the like drink and snack service. And uh, he said, can I get you guys anything? I said, sure, I'll have a Diet Coke. Um, and then when he handed it to me, at the exact same time he handed it to me, he had three cookies in his hand. I didn't know that in advance. I said, and can I get some pretzels? And the dude's face went from like the fake smile to like a very serious, neutral tone. Because um, he's like, I'm really giving this guy three cookies. And he said, and some pretzels. And then when I took the pretzels, I said, thank you. And he said, no problem. Is there anything else? And I said, nah, I'm good. I don't think he realizes that, like, I know how to fly, like, as a passenger on the airplane. It's actually very easy. It was the pilot that made the mistake by not turning on the seatbelt sign. And I'm being unfairly judged as being entitled to the piss of my own bladder because the passenger did, or the pilot didn't turn the seatbelt sign on. He probably didn't give a shit. Nah, man, he was pissed. <laughs> Two hands and swing. Also, I think. They've made the conduct of flights too safe. Wow, okay, we almost had it. You can't fucking do anything. I feel like you should be able to piss whenever you want on the airplane. As A, you have to be in the bathroom, obviously, with the toilet seat up. But like, I think it's, it's the skier's rule. It's buyer beware. If you got turbulence, but you got a piss, what are you supposed to say? Your bladder is full. You're like, hey, just a second, buddy. There's an indeterminate period of turbulence here because we're going, we're flying through the fucking air. Sometimes you just got to go. 
I mean, I get, you could like yell at me. It's never happened to this extent because I'm an adult, so I go pee before I get on the airplane too. But like, I feel like you just got to eat it sometimes. They're like, sir, you can't go to the bathroom. And you're like, I, you got to stop me. Then you gotta wait 20 minutes because some motherfucker's cooking shrimp scampi in the airplane toilet. You're so right. You gotta kick that fucker out. The dude's probably giving him pretzels and cookies, not even stressing out about it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, I wasn't even holding the button that time, man. Oh. I'm rebelling. I'm... I'm not pissing whenever I want. I, I don't want to, you know, be a square peg. But I'm, I'm genuinely... I, I think I'm becoming the guy that's breaking all the rules. Well, at, at the very least, let me tell you my philosophy. I am no longer following rules that were put in place exclusively to deter bad actors when I'm not a bad actor. If a rule is just in place to ensure compliance for no reason, I will not be doing it. But that's okay, because it's not a problem. I'm, I will not be putting my phone into airplane mode unless it's low on battery. I'm sorry, it's just not gonna happen. They would be, planes would be falling out of the sky if that took place. I will not be doing the survey after a call with an AI customer service representative from Gaylord Palms Hotel in sunny Kissimmee, Florida. Why not? Because fuck you, that's why. I don't want to. <laughs> Is doing a survey a rule? Listen, buddy, it's not a fully realized worldview yet. I'm, I'm figuring it out as I go, okay? I got a lot of stuff that they don't come up with the campaign in like one day. Unless you're Vivek Ramaswamy, in which case. I hope that that was only one day or day one. Right, Squeaks? I don't know if you're still here. Huge. And I'm sick of the, all the signs in the bathroom telling me what to do. How You think I'm going to take advice from someone that can't even make like doors that don't have three-inch gaps? So everybody looks at my cock while I'm in the toilet taking a diarrhea shit? You're not a, a, a trusted source for information. You can't even make a door that... What, what are people doing in these bathrooms, man? Why are all the locks broken? Why are the toilets never flush? Why are the dudes horking... 85% of a 90 minute flight? Like what, what happened to society, dude? Hello Shibley, by the way. I know I said hello earlier. I didn't see your response to the daylight savings question though. By the way, Shibley, I, I know I mentioned this to you two Los Angeles trips ago, so like a month and a half ago. Um, I'm here to tell you, I know you didn't really listen to what I said last time, um, but I'm going to tell you that I've, I've independently verified it again. If you want your long flight to go by fast, eat the whole time. Snack. It'll save you. I must have eaten five servings of uh, fried chickpeas with sea salt and vinegar on them. It's probably like 800 calories worth of chickpeas. You're on vacation. I tried it once and I had the shit. It was horrible. I forgot you have IBS. Oh. This advice may... Buyer beware, okay? I still don't understand the eat strat. Eating is entertainment. The number one hobby of uh, working professionals between age 26 and 50 is eating at a restaurant. I don't know why we're, we're all like laboring under the assumption that it's something we only do 
because it's, um, you know, biologically necessary. It's actually North American society's biggest hobby. And I, I say it unironically. I'm not just trying to, to clickbait you. It's one of the cheapest forms, like not just eating out, which is actually expensive, but like eating food is one of the cheapest forms of entertainment you could possibly get. It's so true. Where'd you get fried chickpeas? At the SIBO Express at the Canadian terminal of MCO International Airport? Tell them I sent you. The Seabat Express. <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Once I started seeing food as enter entertainment, it made a lot of things snap into place for me. That doesn't mean it's true, but it made a lot of sense. Ready? Not even close. Not even close. Great dive, though. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Permission to swag out. You know what? It's the first Monday in March that I've been here for. Easily granted. Norm normally, I wouldn't grant it. I like to save some swag in the tank. It's like, you know, packing a granola bar just in case your car breaks down and then you get 45 minutes into the drive and you're like, you know what? I'm bored. And then like for a minute, you're like, yes, yes. And then like a minute later, you're like, fuck. <laughs> I'm bored again. And now I got a shit. It's so true. If you're Chibli, or anybody, I suppose. By the way, you guys all lied to me about uh, Nerd's Rope. Anytime I talk about candy, people are like, you gotta have Nerd's Rope. It's the best candy. I don't know if they sell it in Canada, but I never saw it as a child. I had, we had regular Nerd's. Not the rope. Um, someone gave us three nerds ropes in our cruise mailbox. I ate them. It's okay. I feel like the, the, the nerds are the best part. And the rope is like, I don't even know what it is. It's just like slime. It's just corn syrup. I mean, I guess it's all just corn syrup, but... You get the idea. Check it out, I got gas. <laughs> I forgot what I was talking about. I think we did pretty good, man. We've been live for almost five hours, and I, I barely forgot that I had spent two weeks like only uttering like uh, my dessert order. I think we did pretty well, man. Well, and quips that didn't really go off, but... Hold, hold. You were only gone for a week. Well, hey, for once, I'm doing what you guys do. I'm counting the Saturdays and Sundays as well, so it's almost two weeks. You had the wrong crowd? You're telling me, brother, you will not catch my ass heading down to the Walt Disney Theater at 
8.45 p.m. to see a dude who won Las Vegas Comedy Magician of the Year two years running, it's just not going to happen. But he fucking slayed, apparently. People were saying it was a once-in-a-lifetime. I'm not even knocking the guy with his Michael Scott energy, okay? He had a, a very receptive audience. We. Me trying to do the open mic on the cruise, but it's all bits about how I have disdain for my fellow passengers, even though we're all in this together. Have you ever noticed that the people that move the slowest are in the biggest hurry? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not me, not me. They would throw me overboard for sure. Oh, I almost made it. I got one more try, okay? But there is some truth to that, bro. I don't know what it is. You're like in a line with people. And you're moving like... I'm moving as fast as the dude in front of me is moving. He's moving as fast as the dude in front of him is moving. And then dude just gets behind you and goes like, can you believe this? And I'm like, brother, of course. It's a cruise full of old guys. It's 7 a.m. and the buffet opens at 7. We're all, we're all going, of course. Hang on, lock in. And then I'm like, you know, when they get up there, you'd think they'd be fucking the Flash, right? But instead, they go, oh, do I want dark roast or light roast? And what kind of coffee? I've only had Folgers for the last 32 years. What do I want, Colombian or Sumatran? And you're like, it's the same carafe, man! Hi, honey. Nice cup. Let's see how it drinks. Show me. Whoa, it's like a, a curly straw. Did you see that? Can you hold it up to the camera? You're like right, right here. Ooh. <laughs> whoa, 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 don't stand on the garbage can lid, please. Are, are you Oscar? Wow, so cool, so cool. What did they say to it? They said, wicked. They said, that's amazing. Also, then the dudes on the cruise, they get like the coffee cup, and then they put the milk in it, and then they go to the, the sugar and the cream and the Splenda and the Sorbitol and the Stevia and the... It, and they examine it like it's a, a wine cellar. Hmm, what, what would be the best sugar or fake sugar to put in my coffee this morning? Am I in a stevia in the raw mood today? Certainly, it couldn't be nothing or just a little bit of regular sugar. That, that's bad for you. Instead, hmm, can I get a little bit of simulated? And, and then they put the stuff in and they stir it, but they don't move away from the place where you grab the stuff so that other people could have the luxury of having the same choice that they have. There's a little counter behind them where they're supposed to put the cup and then they stir and put the lid on. Instead, they're doing it in front of the carafe and you're like, brother, there's a little spot to the side. Everybody wants coffee. You're not the, you think you're the only dude who likes coffee? Hey, Tomo. Not a relatable bit. Listen, I can't say what I want to say because of the fact that um, my child is right next to me. Why is the onus on the streamer to be relatable? How about you start living life like me? Instead, the onus is on me to construct a, a single sentence that the entire population of Earth can relate to simultaneously. That's unrealistic. How about if you want to get more meat 
out of the bone here, you start living like I do. You know what I'm saying? No. Nope. Nope, she said no. Now that's relatable. What are you? What are? What am I? I'm climbing this mountain here. What are you wearing in the back? Um, this is called a loincloth. What's a loincloth? It's a little piece of cloth that covers your bum. Bum. So true. Ready? Watch this. Ooh. <laughs> Pretty good, right? Watch this. What's this? You know what this is? This is a gas pump. A gas pump. A gas pump. Un pump de gas. De gas. All right, I'm just saying silly words. You don't need to copy that. Are you laughing at daddy or are you laughing at your straw? I'm laughing at you. Yay! Go, da, da, go, da, da. I'm doing my best, okay? My arms got crossed a little bit though. Oh, he's good, he's good. Watch this. There's not even any need to be swinging here. Make good decisions. Ooh. 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 Ready? Oh no, I fell! <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, I need your help, chat. Where do where do I go from here? Look at I'm like I'm, I have to answer a question. Hello? I know the I know the answer. Up one, okay. Oh no, I'm falling. <laughs> you know what he says when he when he falls down? <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> Whoa! <Wahoo -hoo -hoo. laughs> like to see a two-time comedy magician of the year get this kind of reaction. Three. <laughs> two. One. <laughs> I think I gotta put a, sla a slash marker in there. We're gonna have to make some progress tomorrow. My tree! My tree! My tree! <laughs> It's so funny that, like, chat is laughing at this, and they're like, wow, like, the mind of a child is so innocent. But it's like, what do you think you are, bozo? You're watching the same thing and going, ha, 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 ha. It's just a little bit more sophisticated <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. pretty, pretty cool game, right? Goodbye. Let's, let's see what's over here. You always got to look to the left. Okay, then you go look to the right. It's a long trip. Can you swim down? Of course, watch this.
<laughs> no, my rock! <laughs> I am climbing my rock. I am climbing my rock. I'm the fastest climber there's ever been. No one will ever climb better than me. Oh no! <laughs> I'm climbing my rock. I'm climbing my rock. I'm the best climber out. Oh! <laughs> oh man, she's got tears in her eyes. I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. I can't make it. <laughs> I can make it. I can make it. I can make it. I can't make it. Oh, thank you. Okay, let me see. Okay, here's how we do it. I'm climbing my rock. I'm the best climber in the world. No one will ever climb better than me. I'm gonna be the best climber in history. I'm climbing, I'm climbing. Oh no! Look, it's, it's your hula dance, honey. <laughs> Whoa! Oh <my laughs> That's why you're not supposed to sit on the garbage can lid. You're supposed to be sitting in your rocking chair. You couldn't make it far? You're at the start? It's two different kinds of chatters right here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Here's my impression of. Well, I can't do Jose. it yet. <laughs> impression of Jose? <laughs> yes. I don't think I'm going to do an impression of whoever Jose is. <laughs> oh, man. No, 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 no way, Jose. No way, Jose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you ready for this? Okay. This is my impression of Ruka and Tomo when we close our door at night. Okay, that one, this is why they go on tour. This is why comedians go on tour. Some of the jokes that you think would work do not work. But sometimes you just gotta go like this. You just gotta go, I'm the best climber in the world. I'm the best climber in the world. Oh no, I fell! <laughs> And we got him back. <laughs> daddy. Daddy. Daddy, silly daddy. He was silly. And here's Ruka when we try to take him to the vet, but he doesn't want to get in his cat carrier. I'm the best climber in... Oh, no! <laughs> All right, let's... Let's throw a little slash marker in here, then. <laughs> what? <laughs> slash marker. Are you going to stream? Yeah. Okay. I got... I have a to-do list for you. A to-do list. Don't scratch me. <laughs> I got my own to-do list, but I guess I'll put this one on top of it. I don't want your, I don't want your orange juice. I'm doing it. Mmm, it's so yummy. I didn't even drink it. I was only pretending.
Mm. <coughs> she fell for it again. <laughs> rusted. You say busted? No, rusted. Rusted? Rusted. You say roasted? No, boasted. Boasted? <laughs> what is boasted? You're the one who said it. Fathers are so blessed. I didn't feel that blessed on the two flights we took yesterday. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> I mean, I felt blessed in like a... If you make the time scale long enough, yes. But in the moment, no, I did not feel blessed. Mm. Maybe burn so much of my Switch battery playing My Singing Monsters Playground, the C grade Mario Party knockoff. I could have been playing Balatrol in peace, man. When is Balatrol? It's the card game that Daddy was playing on his controller. Do you have anything to say about that? Uh, sad. Sad? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please let me know when my wife is live. I will send her over, send the chat over to her and I will eat my lunch and do this to-do list. Do this to-do list? No. Do this to-do list? No. 35-year-old man playing video games on the airplane. What am I? What am I supposed to do, bro? Read the newspaper? Pop it. They're not exactly selling the New York Times and the Hudson News, bro. It's all like you know, Esquire magazine. Seventeen different ways to buckle your belt. Snack. Now we're talking. Snack. Where's the snack? Mmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Roasted snack. Roasted snack? Why did you say mmm? Mmm. Why did you say that? Mmm. Why did you say that? A hemomancer. Hmm. Mmm. Pixie. Pixie. What is pixie? Hmm. A lycanthrope. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> That's not that funny. This is funny? A sorceress. When you fall, it's funny. Oh, good luck, because I'm never going to uh, fall again. Look at how fast I'm climbing. I'll never fall again. Whoa! No! Look, I'm like a little spider. Look at how fast. Whoa! Where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? Okay, go, 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 go. Oh. 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 The role of the comedian is to be the truth teller. To say the uncomfortable things that society won't even admit about itself even when they're by themselves. And in doing so, Revealing uncomfortable truths about the human condition. Oh no, I fell! <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Spider, 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 spider. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> That's an understatement. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Look at he's oh he's quick he's quick with it now he's quick with it. Said business. Said business. I better not fall now. It's a long fall. It's a long fall. Oh 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 oh. Do do. Let me, let, you leave the jokes to me, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. Let's send chat over to 
I mean, I'll see you tomorrow. As they say, bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Will you play with me? Of course.